In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an Amazon affiliate website with WordPress, WooZone and WooCommerce. The site we're going to be creating looks just like this. I've created a site all around dog technology, but you can create a site around any niche or niche, if you're American, that you like. The site looks really good and it includes a number of great features, including the ability to import products straight from Amazon, add them to your site, and basically create a little shop that your visitors can then browse and they can add the products to a shopping cart. When they then check out, they're redirected over to Amazon, and then when they make that purchase, you'll earn an affiliate commission. It's also got a blog section, so you can easily add articles, the blog is a great place to attract visitors from the search engines, and it's also a way of adding value and helping people make a purchase. The site works really well on mobile phones and tablets, as you'd expect, because it's 2018. And I'm gonna take you through everything you need to know step by step. Don't worry if you've never made a website before, or you're totally new to websites and affiliate marketing and, and all that kind of stuff. I'm here to help you. I'm gonna hold your hand, I'm gonna guide you, and you're gonna be able to look over my shoulder and watch as I create the website. So, if you're ready, let's get started. Hello, it's Alex here from WP Eagle. I hope you're all well, thank you for watching. If you're new to my channel, why not subscribe? You can do it right now. Just click on the red button below, click on the bell and you'll be notified when I upload new videos, which tends to be every single week. And going forward, I'm gonna be adding loads more videos around the site that we're creating today with lots more tips and tricks and how to add features and how to get traffic and, and all that kind of stuff. So you're not gonna to wanna to miss out on those. So I suggest you subscribe right now. But anyway, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make an Amazon affiliate website with WordPress. Now this video is quite long because there's quite a lot of things that we need to cover and I wanted to show absolutely everything and do everything step by step so that you know, you know exactly what you're doing. To make it easier to navigate, I've added some timings to the description of this video. You scroll down, you'll be able to see those. So those timings enable you to jump to various parts of the video quickly and easily. Now before we jump on the computer, and start creating our website, there's a couple of things I just need to tell you about. First is how much can you expect to earn from an Amazon affiliate website? Well, it depends. The earnings are pretty limitless. Um, you can really earn as much as you like, and it all depends on how much work you wanna put into the website. So for example, if you just create the website and you add a few products and you add a few articles, I recommend that you launch a site with at least 10 articles. If you do that, then you should expect you know, minimal sort of earnings, maybe 10, 20, 30, possibly even $40 a month. However, if you wanna put more work in and add more content, keep your products updated, do all the kind of SEO optimization stuff that I recommend, then your earnings could be considerably more. Now, I'm not promising that you're gonna earn millions. However, I've heard from other viewers that have watched my previous videos on creating affiliate websites, and some of those have been able to get their earnings up to four figures a month. So it's really down to you. Now I'm here to offer all the support and knowledge that you need, not only in this video, but on the other videos on my channel. So if you can learn the stuff and you can do it, then you can earn some really good money off an Amazon affiliate website. So while we're on the subject of money, let me just go through the investment you're gonna to need to make today in order to get your website up and running. Now I'd love to be able to say that you can create a website like this for free. However, that's simply not possible. There is a small cost involved. I've done my best to try and keep it as low as possible. And in fact, I've secured a special voucher that you can use when you purchase your hosting today to get the best price possible. Let me just take you through exactly what you're gonna need and how much it all costs. The first thing is your website hosting. So this is basically where you pay a company to keep your website online. They put it on their server and make it available and, and not do all that kind of technical stuff for you. I recommend HostGator because they are great value for money and offer a really good service. Now the cost of your hosting is gonna depend on the length of the term 
that you uh, commit to when you order your hosting. Generally, the longer that you buy, the better price you're gonna get. And you know, keep in mind that setting up a website like this and getting some traffic and getting some earnings is gonna take a little bit of time. But just say, for example, that you go for a year's hosting, which is what I'd recommend as kind of a minimum length of hosting, that's gonna come in at $65 for the year. The next thing you're gonna need is the WooZone Premium plugin. And this is a bit of software that connects into our WordPress website and allows us to download products from Amazon and kind of takes care of all the Amazon affiliate stuff. It's a premium plugin, so that means that you do have to pay for it, but for your money, you get access to the software, you get free updates, and you also get support from the plugin developers. And the cost for the plugin is just $43. And then finally, we need the premium theme, which is called Kingdom and it's been designed and written to specifically work well with the WooZone plugin. And again, because it's premium, you get access to updates and you get access to support from the developers. And the cost for the theme is $39. For those of you that don't know what a theme is, basically that's what gives the WordPress website its look and feel, allows you to change the colors, the fonts, and, and do all the layout kind of stuff. So that's what you're gonna to need to invest today in order to get your Amazon affiliate website up and running. The total comes in at $147, which is actually a small investment because that gives you the site for the entire year. You know, if you break that down to a monthly figure, it's uh, top of my head, just over $10 a month. So not a huge investment. And as I said, if you follow this tutorial and my other videos around promotion and getting traffic, you should be earning more than that in commissions in no time at all. So I think we're about ready to get started. Now I'm here to help you set this website up. If you get stuck at any point, then just leave a question below in the comments and I'll do my best to reply to as many as I possibly can. I also do a live stream every single week. So if you like, you can bring your questions on that stream and I try and answer as many as I possibly can in real time while I'm live. I think that's enough looking at my face. Let's get on the computer and let's get this website set up. I wish you the best of luck. So the first thing we're gonna need is a domain name. A domain name is basically your .com or your .co.uk, your .org, your .net, whatever dot you like. Really, there's a lot of extensions available nowadays to purchase. You can have more than one domain name as well and, and just point them all at your website, that's fine. So you might wanna register both the .co.uk and the .com, it's entirely up to you. Now, if you've already got a domain name registered, either with GoDaddy or another domain registrar, that's fine. I'm gonna be showing you how you can use that domain name for your website. You can skip forward to step two. Remember, you'll find all the timings for the different sections of this video in the video description. I'll also put the time you need to skip to on the screen right now. So yeah, for those of you that have already got a domain name registered, skip forward to that point and get started setting up your hosting. For those of you that don't have a domain name, let's get one registered right now. Now I recommend GoDaddy for domain names. I use them for all my domain names and I like to keep them all in one place so I know exactly which ones I've got because I do have a tendency to register lots of domain names. I use GoDaddy only for my domain names. I don't use their hosting or anything like that um, because it's not very good, um, but they are great for managing domains. So head over to godaddy.com. I'll put a link in the description of this video, which will be an affiliate link, so thank you very much if you use it. When you get to GoDaddy, you'll find a box like this, and all you need to do is type in uh, the domain name that you'd like. So the domain name I'm going for today is called Bowwell Tech. I have already registered it, but uh, just for this video, let's do a search anyway. It says that it's taken, that's because I've taken it. And then it's also offering me some alternatives. So if your domain name, uh, the one that you're looking to buy is already taken, you're gonna have to find some variations, maybe change the extension or add a few other words or try some other ideas until you get one that's available. For example, if I was gonna try something else, I might go for great stuff for dogs. Do a search. No, that one's gone as well. And cats. <laughs> Let's get it big. There we go. That's quite a long domain name, isn't it? But it is available to buy. So once you've found something that is available, you can add it to your cart and 
check out, uh, put your payment details in and all that kind of stuff. And it only takes a few moments for GoDaddy to register it and then it will be ready to use. So I'm now in my GoDaddy domain manager and here are the two domains that I'm gonna be using today. I've registered the .com and the .co.uk. The site that I'm gonna be making is gonna be UK focused, um, but I wanted to secure the .com as well, so that maybe if I wanna do a US targeted site in the future, I've got it, um, or just basically to protect my brand. So I've registered both and I'll be pointing both of them at the new website. So that's our domain done for now. Uh, the next thing we need to do is set up our hosting. We will be coming back to GoDaddy to adjust the settings on our domains once we've got the hosting set up. So let's do that right now. So now we're gonna be setting up our web hosting. Web hosting is basically where your website lives on the internet. You hire a little bit of a server from a hosting company and they make sure that your website's online and available to your visitors. I recommend Hostgator. I use them for pretty much all of my affiliate sites. The reason I like Hostgator is that they're really good value for money. So if you're just starting out in affiliate marketing and you haven't got a lot of spare cash, Hostgator are a great choice because their prices are really low. But just because their prices are low, it doesn't mean that they compromise on service. They offer a really good service for the money. Uh, let's just scroll down and take a look at what you get. You get some great support from Hostgator, so if there's ever a problem, which there very rarely is, but if you do need to ask a question about your hosting, you can get in touch with them 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. They offer a great online chat service, so it's really easy to get hold of someone. You just log into your account, fire up the chat box and ask your question. It's really easy to get started. I'm gonna be showing you how to do that in just a few moments, but. We've got a number of features built in. So for example, setting up WordPress, which is what we're gonna be doing, is really easy with Hostgator. Other things that guarantee, as I've already mentioned, the support, there's a 45 day money back guarantee. So if for whatever reason, you're not completely satisfied with the service you're getting from Hostgator, you can cancel your account and get a complete refund. And they offer a 99.9% .9 uptime. So that basically means your site is gonna be there online all the time. You know, you don't want your website going down. That's not a good thing because a, a website that's down means that you're not gonna get any traffic and you're not gonna be making any sales. And they've also won a few awards from different uh, websites and blogs. But anyway, let's get started. I'm gonna be sharing with you a coupon today as well. So you're gonna get an even better price than the ones you see advertised on here. So let's go for web hosting. You'll notice there is cloud hosting and WordPress hosting, but the standard web hosting is just fine for what we need to do. You can, of course, change your package and plan whenever you want. You might be thinking, but we're installing WordPress. Surely we need WordPress hosting. It's a little bit misleading, but you can actually install WordPress just fine on the standard web hosting. So let's go for that. I'm gonna give it a click. And now we get to choose our plan. So the starter plan is this one here, which is the hatchling. Starts at just 275 a month, although that cost does depend on the term that you take. I'll go into that in a few moments. Generally, the hatchling plan is just fine for those of you just starting out and you've just got the single domain. If you wanna add more domains, maybe have more sites, then the baby and business plan might be a better fit for you. But for now, I'm gonna choose the hatchling plan. I'm gonna click sign up now. And we're now ready to sign up. Here's the Hostgator order form. So if you follow step one and you didn't already have a domain name, hopefully you've now got one registered over at GoDaddy. If you already had a domain name registered with a different provider, that's fine as well. I'm gonna be showing you how you can use that domain for your new website. But either way, we already own a domain name, so let's click I already own this domain. I'm now gonna type in my domain name, which is bowwowtech.co.uk. Now I did mention I've got a .com as well, and I'll show you how to repoint that in a second, but my primary domain name, the main one, the one that's gonna come up when people visit the site is gonna be bowwowtech.co.uk. Because as I said, it's gonna be a UK targeted site. So once we've entered that, let's uh, just press tab so we get to the next section. And it's just gonna check that that's okay. It says it's unavailable because 
I've obviously already registered it. And it's offering me a few other domain names uh, if I want them, but I don't because I get all my domain names from GoDaddy. The next section is to choose our hosting plan. Now we've already chosen the package type, we just did that on the previous step, but if for whatever reason you wanna change that now, you can. The next section is the billing cycle. So this is how long you basically wanna commit for. Now as you can see, you get a much better price if you can commit for a longer period of time. Now setting up a website does take a little bit of time and adding content and getting traffic can take a few months. So I personally always go for at least a 12 month billing cycle, sometimes 24, sometimes 36. It really depends on how much money I've got to spare right now and how long I think um, I'm gonna keep the site for. Generally, I have sites for many, many years, so if you can afford it right now, I would go for the 24 or the 36 month, uh, or at least a 12 month. If you are very short of cash, then maybe the one month might work for you, but as I say, it's much, much better value if you can go for the 12 months, 24 months, or 36 months. I have got a voucher code that I'm gonna share with you in just a moment that will get these prices uh, even lower. So I'm gonna select 12 months. The next box is your username, so this is what you're gonna be using to log in to HostGator and kind of set up all your stuff. So it's best just to you know use something that you can remember. So Bow Wow Tech is probably fine for me. Here's the security pin. You're gonna need this if you contact support. So enter a pin number that you'll uh, remember. I'm not gonna fill in all this form right now because that's a bit boring, I'll do it in a second. The next section is your billing info. So it's a pretty straightforward form. You gotta just enter your email, your name, company if you've got one address, all that kind of stuff. Over here we've got our payment information so you can pay either with a credit card or with PayPal. So enter all that information in this box. Section four is additional services. Now we don't actually need any of these additional services. So untick these to uh, turn them off and get your price down even lower. I do have some videos on my channel around protecting your site from hackers and how to back up your site. You can do all that stuff without having to pay HostGator, so make sure that you untick all these boxes. Section five is very important, it's the coupon code. So there may already be a coupon in the box. I've got this one shared free 660, which will give me a discount of $36. However, if I use my coupon code, which is Eagle Free Zero, and click validate, get an even better discount of 42.96. So if you go ahead and use my coupon code two, it's Eagle Free Zero, you will get a great discount. It is an affiliate coupon, so I will earn a small commission if you use it. So I'll say thank you very much now in advance, and yeah, please use it and get a great discount. If you have decided to go for a one month uh, billing cycle, this coupon code will give you that first month for just a penny. So once you've entered the coupon code Eagle Free Zero and clicked validate, there's only one more step. That is to tick this box to say that you've read and agreed to the terms of service, the cancellation policy and the privacy policy. And then we just click checkout now and we're all done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly complete this form, get my hosting all set up. Then we can move on to the next step, which is repointing our domain name so that it's working with our new HostGator hosting. So I completed the order form, I'm all signed up now for HostGator. I've just received this email from HostGator. It contains all the important information that I need in order to access my new hosting account. You should receive one as well once you're signed up. It'll be very similar to this. Look out for an email with the subject line, hostgator.com, your account info. So we're gonna need this information right now to get our WordPress set up and to repoint our domain name. And that's what I'm actually gonna do right now. I'm gonna repoint my domain name. So if you've just purchased a domain name from GoDaddy, that's where we're gonna be heading to make the change and get the domain name working on our new hosting. If you've already got a domain name, maybe with another registrar, the process is pretty much the same. So you should be able to follow me uh, with what I'm doing on GoDaddy and apply it to whoever your domain name is with. So let's do that right now. I'm just gonna pop up a new tab and then head over to GoDaddy. and sign in and go to manage domains. I need to enter my login details. 
So if you're with say Namester or Namecheap, you need to go over to them and log in as well. Basically just go and log in to whoever's got your domain name. I'm gonna find the relevant domain name. It's the .co.uk, that's the primary domain that I'm gonna be using. Basically what you're looking for are your DNS settings. So if we click on these three little dots, we've got a manage DNS. It'll be called something very similar with pretty much any domain registrar that you happen to be using. So just look for those DNS settings or domain name servers or domain name settings, that kind of thing. It's, it's all around the DNS basically. So here are our name servers. Just have to scroll down to find them. And this is what we're gonna be changing right now. So I'm gonna click change. I'm gonna select custom. Then if we go back to the email from HostGator, we'll find our name server. So I'm just gonna copy that into my clipboard. I'm on a Mac, so I'm pressing Command C to put it into my clipboard. On a PC, I think you press Control C. Or of course you can right click and select copy. And I'm just gonna paste that. That's Command V on a Mac, Control V on a PC, I think. Let's go back, get second name server, copy to clipboard and paste. That's it, that's all done. Now that's gonna take a few moments just to update all the settings. It needs to you know, propagate around the world, update all the domain name servers all around the world. So it can take a few moments. We'll know it's all working when we visit our domain name. So if I go over to bowwowtech.co.uk, I'm just gonna open another tab, put that in, browse over. So at the moment, I've got the GoDaddy page coming up and you'll probably get your domain name registrar's page coming up. We'll know that the DNS change has taken effect and everything is working and we're now pointing at HostGator when this GoDaddy page changes to a website coming soon page. So I'm gonna wait a few moments for that to happen. But in the meantime, I'm gonna repoint my other domain that I've got my .com, I'm gonna set that so that it's redirecting over to the .co.uk. This is obviously an optional step, it only applies if you've got multiple domain names that you wanna use on the site. So I'm just gonna go back to Domain Manager, I'm gonna to go to My Domains. Then I'm just gonna search for the domain, it's bowwowtexter.com this time. And again, we're gonna go back into Manage DNS. Then I'm gonna scroll down and I've got this forwarding here, I'm gonna click add. And then in here, I'm gonna type in bowwowtech.co.uk. And I want the 301 permanent uh, redirect, forward only, and I can tick that update my name servers and DNS settings. Support this change. That's all done. Let's go back to bowwowtech.co.uk. Let's close these tabs, we don't need them anymore. Let's refresh and see if we're pointing at HostGator yet. There we go. So now we've got the website coming soon page. That means that we are now pointing at HostGator. That's all working. Now for me, it didn't take very long for those settings to update. It can take a lot longer, so if you know you're refreshing and you're still seeing your domain registrar page, don't panic. You might have to give it a, you know 24 hours possibly. That's like a maximum um, before it actually works. But generally, an hour or so is, is enough. Let me just check the .com, see if that redirect is working. And it is. You see, we got redirected back to the .co.uk. So our hosting is all set up. We're all ready to go. The next step is to install WordPress. The next step is to install WordPress onto our brand new hosting. Well done, you're doing great so far. We're making some really good progress. So I'm back in my email. I've pulled up my account info email, the one that you received earlier, do you remember it? What I need to do is log into my control panel. We can see there's a link right here. So let's give that a click. Then the username is the username you entered when you set up your hosting. You'll find it in your email if you've forgotten it. I'm just gonna copy and paste that in like that. Let's go back to the email again. Copy and paste, then log in. 
So we're now into our HostGator control panel. My browser is asking me if I wanna save the password. Might as well. Don't need any of these banners or anything that are popping up, so let's close them. Also don't need my email anymore, so I'll close that tab, keep it nice and tidy. So in here we can do pretty much anything we need to with regards to our hosting. Um, there's loads of stuff in here. It might look a bit overwhelming, but don't worry. Uh, we don't actually need half of it. We, uh, we only need a few little bits. So to install WordPress, if you scroll down to the software section, you're looking for the quick install link. Give that a click. And then we can see that we've got WordPress right here. Let's give that a click. And now we're ready to install WordPress. First thing we need to do is select the domain. We've already got the one. Spowaltech.co.uk, of course. We're gonna leave this directory box blank. Now I'm gonna click next. We then need to give the site a name. It says blog title, but WordPress is way more than a blog nowadays, so it's actually the website title. So I'm just gonna type in the name, Bow Wow Tech. Then need to enter an admin username. So this is the username you're gonna be using to log into WordPress with, which is different to logging in to your host Gaelic control panel. So I'll just do WP Eagle as I can remember that. And a first and a last name. I then need to enter my email address. And that's it. Final thing is I need to tick the terms of service agreement. You wanna keep that one ticked, the automatically create a new database for this installation. And then we're all done, let's click install. That's gonna take a few moments. So we've got a big green tick, that means the installation is complete. Got our installation details here. This password you're gonna to need to make a note of. Just gonna copy that to my clipboard. You should get an email as well with all this information, so don't worry too much. But I'm gonna copy that into my clipboard because I need it right now just to double check that the WordPress login is working. So let's click login. So here's our WordPress login. If for whatever reason you don't see this screen, maybe you're still getting the coming soon page, just wait a little longer. You might need to clear your browser cache. You might need to flush your DNS, uh, which is all stuff you can look up on Google if you need to learn how to do that. Um, or it might just need a little bit of time. But I'm getting the screen up so I can now log in. The username was WP Eagle, if you remember. And the password I've got in my clipboard. If you've forgotten your WordPress login details, you'll find an email in your inbox that will have come from HostGator um, it's sent to you after you uh, run the WordPress install. But let's click login. So we're now logged into our WordPress website. This is the dashboard, this is where you can do everything you need to do with regards to your WordPress website. So we can navigate down the left hand side here. I'll obviously be taking you through everything you need to know as we uh, work through our website in this video. The first thing I wanna do is just clean up the uh, the WordPress install. When you run one of those automated install things that come with your hosting, it tends to install a few extra plugins and things that we don't need. A plugin is an extra bit of software that plugs in, as the name suggests, kind of installs into WordPress and gives you extra functionality. And I prefer just to install the plugins that I want rather than have plugins automatically installed. So very quickly, we'll just remove the plugins that we don't need and get our install nice and clean. First thing I'm gonna do is close a few of these uh, banner ads. We don't need them, so close that one. You may have slightly different uh, things coming up. Hostgator do kind of change it over time, but it'll be very similar and the process is exactly the same. So um, let's go into plugins, which is down here. So plugins and then installed plugins. And I'm just gonna scroll down and then we've got this list of plugins that we've got installed on our website. So I'm gonna leave Akismet. Akismet is very useful because it allows you to get rid of uh, comment spam, which is a bit of a problem with WordPress. So I'm gonna leave that as it is. I'm gonna leave the Google Analytics one because that's quite handy and I'll be adding Google Analytics to the site later. I don't need Hello Dolly, so let's get rid of that. I'm just gonna click Delete. That's just a bit of fun, doesn't do anything. Um, I don't want Jetpack right now, so I'm gonna deactivate that. And once it's deactivated, we can scroll down and we can delete that one too. Mojo Marketplace again, don't need that, so deactivate and then delete. 
Optin Monster. I'm gonna deactivate that. Although I am working on an Optin Monster video, so <laughs> keep an eye on the channel for that, It'll be coming soon. But right now we don't need it. And WP Forms Lite, I'm gonna deactivate that as well. Um, I don't need to plug in, whatever. Just ask me why. Submit and deactivate and then delete. So there we go, we've only got two plugins installed now. Got a nice clean install, we can go back to the dashboard and it should look a little bit tidier. Yeah, there we go. So we come up here, we, go, uh, we can go to visit site and that will uh, take us to the front of the website and we can see what we've got. So just the basic WordPress theme right now, um, but it's all up and running perfectly. And we're now ready to uh, build on this install and create our Amazon affiliate website. So the next step is to install our premium theme. A theme is what gives our site its look and feel. We're gonna be using Kingdom, which is a theme specifically written uh, to work with the WooZone plugin, which is what we're gonna be using to do all our Amazon affiliate stuff. So on to the next step. So in this step, we're gonna be installing our WordPress theme. A WordPress theme is basically what gives our website its look and feel. At the moment, we've just got the default one installed, this one that makes it look just like a blog. Uh, we obviously wanna turn it into an Amazon affiliate site with the e-commerce functionality and all that stuff. And this theme is gonna help us do that. It's called Kingdom and it's been specifically made to work with WooZone, which is the plugin we're gonna be using to connect to Amazon and import all our products and, and do all the affiliate stuff. Now the theme is a premium theme, which means there is a small cost to it and that cost is $39 per license. For that you get the theme, which is of high quality, you get future updates and you get six months support from the developer. The developer's called AA Team. So I'll put a link up now and you'll also find uh, all the links that you need in the description to this video. It is an affiliate link, so if you use it, thank you very much. Once you follow the link, you'll come over to Theme Forest, which is what we're looking at right now. And you're gonna need to sign up and deposit some funds into your account and then buy this theme and download it. When you're depositing your funds, it might be worth depositing at least $88 because after we've installed this theme, we're also gonna be purchasing the WooZone plugin from Envato, from Code Canyon, which is basically the sister site to Theme Forest. So you might as well, yeah, put the funds in now. As I say, you're gonna need at least $88 because this one is 39 and WooZone is gonna be 43. So yeah, come over here, sign up, deposit your funds, purchase Kingdom and download it. I've already purchased it, so I can just download it straight away. So I'm gonna just click download, that should start the download. Let's find a folder, there we go, dog tech, that'll do. And then save, so I'm just downloading that to my computer. Let's take a look at the file that we've got. There it is. So we've downloaded a zip file and we need to extract it. So I'm just gonna double click on that. And there we go, we've got a folder there. Uh, it's got the version number on it, which is currently 3.5.1. You may have a different version, that's fine. So within that folder, we've got three more folders. And the one we want is the one that says theme, and then there's two folders within there, and we want the th one that says theme zipped. Within there, there's two other zip files, and we don't need to extract them, we just leave them as they are. So let's go back to our website. And here we are. I'm still logged in, so we can just go straight back into the dashboard, and we can install our theme. So to do that, I'm gonna go into appearance and themes. Then up here we've got this add new button, I'm gonna give that a click. Then up here again we've got this upload theme button, and give that a click. And now I'm gonna click choose file. And I need to navigate to the correct folder, which I'm actually already in. Um, but if you remember, I had to folder 3.51, this one, which was inside the theme forest zip, I extracted that. So then into the version uh, number, which is in my case 3.51, don't worry if yours is different and into the theme folder, and then we want theme zipped. And first I'm gonna upload this one, kingdom.zip. Click open, and then install now. Okay, that's done. Let's click activate. 
and the theme is now active. There's a message that's appeared telling us that we need to install some plugins um, in order for the theme to work. As I mentioned earlier, a plugin gives WordPress some extra functionality. So we better do what it's asking. Let's click Begin Installing Plugins. Here's a list of the plugins it's gonna install. Now I want all of them apart from this SEO pack because uh, it's not very good. <laughs> and it's only a light version anyway, so I'm just gonna tick all of them apart from the premium SEO pack. When it comes to SEO, I do have lots of videos on it uh, on the channel, so do check them out. I recommend a plugin called Yoast SEO. But yeah, there's some videos on the channel around that, so um, check them out. Uh, select Install after I've ticked all of the plugins apart from that one. So install in this drop down and then apply. And it's going to install these plugins for us. That's all done. Don't worry about this warning. It's not important. So they're all green. That's all good. So if we go back to the uh, required plugins installer. Here they all are. And we just need to uh, basically switch them on, activate them. So I'm going to tick the box at the top, which will select all of them for me. See, they're all ticked. Then in the bulk actions, I'm gonna select activate and then apply. So they've all been activated. Perfect, let's go back to the dashboard. And we're now presented with the WooCommerce uh, setup wizard. So let's just quickly go through this. So just to be clear, WooCommerce is an e-commerce plugin and we're gonna be using WooZone, which is our affiliate plugin on top of this. So this kind of gives us our checkout functionality and the ability to add products and that kind of thing. So keep in mind that this is designed for a traditional e-commerce site, so a lot of the features uh, we're not gonna need. So let's go through the wizard. The first thing it's asking is um, for an address. This is not that important because you're an affiliate site, you're not gonna be you know, sending out parcels or invoices or anything like that. Amazon are gonna do all that for you. So. You can put your real address in if you like, but you don't need to, I've put this one in. You can set your currency though, that does need to be correct. I've gone for pound sterling because my site is um, UK targeted. And the rest is all fine, let's click let's go. The next step is the payment. Now again, you're not gonna be taking any payment because you're gonna be sending people off to Amazon to complete their order. So if these are ticked, then make sure they're unticked. They should be gray, like mine. If yours are purple, just click them to make them gray. Don't need any payment gateways. Let's click continue. Again, we don't need shipping because Amazon's gonna be doing all the shipping. So let's uh, just untick those and click continue. Here's some recommended stuff, don't need that, don't need that. Just untick it all and click continue. Next it's saying we need to install Jetpack, which we don't. Let's click skip this step, there's a link at the bottom. And now we're ready, that's all done. We can visit our dashboard. And we're all good. So we can get rid of some of these messages at the top. Let's just click uh, the little crosses, don't need those messages. This message says your store does not appear to be using a secure connection. Um, don't worry too much about that right now. If you wanna install SSL, I've got some videos on the channel about that. I'll put links to all these things in the description. But for now, I'm just gonna click dismiss. So our final step is to activate the child theme. Um, so let's go to appearance and themes. Running the child theme is good practice because it basically allows you to do updates and stuff a lot easier. So just trust me on that. So I'm gonna click add new in the theme section and then upload theme and then I'm gonna choose a file again. And this time I'm gonna select kingdom child. Then install now. That's all done, let's click activate. And that's done. Let's just take a look at the front of the site. There we go, you can see it's all changed. I mean, it still doesn't look anything <laughs> amazing right now, but we've got our, our cart up here and this kind of menu thing, which we'll need to adjust and, and whatnot, but it's starting to take shape. Trust me, it'll all come together very soon. 
The next step is to install WooZone, which is our Amazon affiliate plugin. We're gonna need to go and download that right now and install it. So, on to the next step. So, I'm over at Code Canyon, which is where you can get hold of the WooZone plugin. It's called WooCommerce Amazon Affiliates WordPress plugin. Not actually called WooZone, actually, now I look. W zone there. It's known as WooZone. It's always been called WooZone. I don't know why they've changed the name on it. You'll find a link um, to this page in the description, and I'll put one up now in a card as well. It's an affiliate link, so if you use it, thank you very much. Now, hopefully, if you followed my advice earlier when we were purchasing Kingdom, you've got enough credit in your Invato account. You can just purchase this straight away without having to load up any more cash. Cost for the plugin, as I mentioned earlier, is just $43. For that, you get the plugin, which is uh, very important, obviously. You get future updates and you get six months of support from the developers A18. Now, I've already got a few licenses for this plugin. And uh, by the way, you do need a license for each site you're gonna run. So if you're thinking of having multiple sites, you are gonna need to buy multiple uh, licenses. But anyway. I'm gonna click download. You're gonna to need to purchase and then download. Let me just find it in my download section. I've got quite a few things in here. There we go. So I'm gonna click download all files and documentation. Put it in the right uh, folder. Let me just find it. My messy computer. Save. There we go. Let's take a look at the file we've just downloaded. Here it is. So I'm just gonna double click it to extract it. There we go, it's got a folder called 10.0.5. Again, it's the version number of the plugin. Yours may be different, uh, but don't worry too much about that. Let's have a look in the folder, and there we've got two more folders, one called licensing and one called plugin. And within plugin, we've got woozone.zip, and that's what we're gonna be uploading to our website. So let's do that now, I can just close this, don't need this right now. And let's go back to our website. In fact, I can close Code Canyon as well, I don't need that. So back into the dashboard, let's close that, keep it tidy. And then into plugins, and add new. This message is just not gonna leave me alone, is it? <laughs> I'm gonna dismiss it again one more time. Go away, there we go. Then upload plugin. Choose file, and let's navigate to that folder with the version number, 10.0.5 for me, and plug in, and then woozone.zip, and then I'm gonna click Install Now. So that's installed, let's click Activate. And there we go. So a few more messages popped up. I mean, we've already got Kingdom installed, that's fine. Let's click Dismiss This Notice. And there we go. Now we've got a few things we need to do just to get everything up running. The first is it says our memory limit is too low, so we need to adjust that. So we'll do that in a moment. Um, the other thing is we need to add our item purchase code to get it all working. So we do need to go back to Code Canyon, actually. Let's uh, just do that now. So back to Code Canyon. and back to the uh, WooCommerce page. Then under the Support um, tab, if you scroll down, you've got some purchase codes. What you wanna do is copy your purchase code into your clipboard, and go back to your site and just paste it in. Click Activate Now. And there we go. All good, so now we've got this setup wizard, so let's run through it, get started. So it's asking what kind of site is bowwowtech.co.uk? It's kind of a blog and an online store. So let's go for blog. And next. And it's a fresh install. So here, what's the, we've got a question, with what purpose you want to use WooZone? W zone, the language, <laughs> the English is quite good as you can see. Uh, it's basically the second one, I'm creating a new website with the sole purpose of having a store featuring Amazon products. 
and then next. So these are settings that it's um, done for us. So we want the on site cart, we want the 90 day cookie, the reviews tab, the cross selling, um, product availability by country box. I don't actually want that, so I'm gonna untick that. You only really need that if you're gonna be promoting um, products from multiple Amazon countries. Uh, I don't want the coupon thing. The next one is checkout email, so it will ask for an email address before the checkout process happens. I'll leave that on but make sure that you've got a privacy policy on your site. I'm gonna leave remote Amazon images and I'm gonna leave show free shipping. Let's click next. And here we've got a few options. It's really up to you on this. You can decide uh, the prices set up you want, so whether you wanna pull in prices from products that just have Amazon or you wanna pull in the prices from the third party sellers that are on Amazon. I'm actually gonna set it just to only Amazon. I find the site works a bit better if you have that option set to only Amazon. Again, on the import, I'm gonna set that to only Amazon. I'm gonna leave that as import as publish, which means as soon as we import stuff, they're gonna go live on the site. I don't wanna import free products. I do wanna import attributes. Let's click next. I'm gonna leave the number of images and variations to all. And I leave spin on import on, basically means that the descriptions will be rewritten by a computer to make them unique. They may need checking. We'll go into that in a little bit more detail later when we start adding some products. I'm gonna click next. Here's the checkout message. So this is what people will see before they get redirected to Amazon. That's fine. Three seconds is fine. And change the buy button text if you like. I'm gonna leave it as it is. I'm gonna leave all these options as they are for now. We can, of course, change them later. So this page is where we're gonna enter our affiliate IDs and our keys in order to access the Amazon API and download products and that kind of thing. So let's go over to Amazon now and I'll show you how do you can sign up as an affiliate and how you can get all this information. Okay, so I'm over at amazon.co.uk. You'll of course head over to whichever Amazon you're looking to promote. Maybe it's amazon.com or maybe an Amazon for a different country. And what you wanna do is scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page. And then the footer here, under the make money with us, you'll see the associates program. Give that a click. And then what you wanna do is click this join now for free and you'll need to sign in with your Amazon account. Now I'm already an Amazon um, affiliate, as you'd probably guess, so if I sign in, I doubt I'll be able to sign up again. Let's have a look, oh, I can. So uh, let me just take you through this wizard. Even though I'm already signed up, let's just see what happens. So it's already got my address details. And then you're gonna select whether you're a US person for uh, tax purposes, I am not. Then here you need to enter your websites. So enter your domain name uh, of the site that you're setting up. For me, it would be uh, Bow Wow Tech. I'm not gonna do all this right now because um, I say I'm already signed up, but you need to add your website there. Now don't worry that you obviously haven't got it set up and built yet, that doesn't matter. Amazon are only gonna come and check out your application when you start sending over some traffic and start making some sales. So let me just put something in here so I can get on to the next step. I say I'm not gonna actually complete it. Bowwowtech.co.uk. And then it'd be next. And then in here you can choose your associate ID. So that's just basically a word or whatever that Amazon are gonna recognize um, the traffic that comes from you with. Could be anything you like. And then here you need to uh, type in what your website is about. So you would explain that you're helping people find the right products and you're gonna have lots of blog content. And try and put a little bit of detail in here. It'll probably help your uh, application go through. You got some boxes to tick in terms of the stuff you're gonna be promoting and what type of uh, website you've got. And all these questions, you need to answer them all, I'm afraid. Uh, it shouldn't take too long and then you need to tick that box and then you're all done. So 
I'm not gonna do it all as I said, I'm already uh, already I'm already done. But what I'm gonna do now is I am gonna sign in to the affiliate program and show you what you got. Aha, here we go. So this is the dashboard that you get um, when you are signed up as an Amazon affiliate. So first thing we need to do is set up our associate IDs. Now you've just entered one when you sign up, so that should be already up here. I've got this one up here, but you can have multiple ones. So if you've got different websites, you can kind of track how each one's doing separately. So manage them, you come up here and then click manage your tracking IDs. And I've got all these different ones. You can simply add a new one by clicking on this add tracking ID. Let's call it Bow Wow Tech. Now you may not need to do this because you've just probably created one when you, you set up and if you don't need another one, that's fine. Just use the one that you uh, set up when you registered. That's been created successfully. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy that into my clipboard. And I'm gonna go back to the WooZone setup wizard, it's still here. I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna paste that into the UK box like that. Now, the API keys or these access keys, that's what WooZone uses to pull down information from Amazon, you know, like the description prices and, and all that kind of thing. Now, recently Amazon changed the terms uh, of service with regards to this um, API and getting access to these keys. And they've said that you actually need to get free sales before you can get them. But don't worry, this is not a problem. We can add a few products and we can add some content to a site without them. Um, we can add some products using a Chrome browser extension that's a new feature of this version of Wooz and I'm gonna be showing you how to do that in a few moments. So don't worry if you can't get access to the keys right now. If you're already an established affiliate and you have uh, made some sales, let me show you where you can get these keys and, and this will apply to you as well after you've made your initial free sales. You go back into the Amazon um, dashboard, you go to tools and then the product advertising API. You've got these manage your credentials buttons and we need manage your credentials, so let's give that a click. And you sign in again with your Amazon account. Then in here you can click continue to security credentials, and then you've got this access keys section. You click on the plus. And in here are all your keys and you can, um, if you haven't already got one, you can create a new one and it will um, generate you a key. So I've already got some access keys set up. What I'll do just to show you exactly the process, I will um, delete my current access key. And I will create a new one by clicking on this blue button here. And then that's done, and then if you click the little arrow here, or click the text even, it will show you your access key and secret access key. And what you wanna do is just copy, and then oh, let's just remove whatever's in there already, and then paste that in, and then back here and get the secret key, copy that. Oh. And paste, and then we're all set up. So I say don't worry too much about uh, the keys right now if you haven't got access to them because you haven't had enough sales. I'm gonna show you how you can import some products anyway and get up and running, and then when you are approved, you can come back and do this step. It's pretty straightforward. So uh, last thing is our main affiliate ID is UK. The request type is auto detect, that's fine. The import location, again, is UK. Let's click check. It's green with a tick, we're all good. Let's click finish. So that's our WooZone all set up. Let's click close. So we still need to do the memory, we'll do that in a moment. So if you need to change those keys in the future or you need to add them because you've just been approved, you'll find them under Amazon Config which is in WooZone down here. And you see the keys are here that I've just added. When you wanna add some new ones, you just enter them in here. The um, key first, and then the secret, and then click add, and, and you're done. And if we scroll down, you can change your affiliate IDs here. 
and all the other settings to do with uh, importing from Amazon. So the final thing we're gonna do with regards to getting this WooZone installed is uh, increase this memory limit, get rid of this message. So we're gonna do this ourselves. If you ask HostGator to do it, they probably will say that they can't do it and that you should go on a higher package or something, but that's not strictly true. <laughs> we can do it ourselves. The easiest way to do it is with a plugin. So let's go to plugins and add new. In the search box, I'm gonna type in WP Ooh, hyphen config, if I can type edit. It's gonna do a search across um, the WordPress plugin directory, which is full of free plugins. Uh, if we scroll down, it's this one I want with a big cog. I'll click install now. That's gonna download it and install it, and then I'm gonna click activate. And that's now active. So if we scroll down, we've got this new option here, WPCF editor. Let's give that a click. And the first option here, we've got the uh, memory limits. Let's just whack that up to 128M, click save. So this is a warning that's saying that um, if everything's not good, then you can restore it by clicking there. Uh, it's recommended to test the site. I'm sure it's all fine, but I'm just gonna open a new tab and just go over to the site and just check we're all good, no errors or anything. Now we have got an error message come up, but that's not actually anything to do with the memory uh, problem, so uh, we'll sort that out in a moment. Let's just go back and click update and we're all happy. And then done. Now that uh, memory message has gone. So that other error message, which we just saw, um, that's to do with the PHP version, I believe. So we can adjust that in our HostGator control panel. Uh, you may or may not get this error message, of course. If you do, let me just quickly show you how you can fix it. So I'm gonna head back to my HostGator control panel. Remember, you can find these details in the email you receive from HostGator, if you've forgotten what they are. Well, it looks like I have, hang on. Let me get the right password. There we go. Let me update that password. So we need to make sure that we're on the right website. I'm on the Bow Wow Tech, you can see over there. If we just scroll down, what we're looking for is PHP version. Uh, there we go, PHP selector, that'll do. So we're on 5.6, what we need is seven ideally. Um, we can go for 7.1, let's see if that's okay. I think that's the latest version, I don't know how stable it is. Um, but I think we'll be fine, let's click update. That's done. If we go back to our website and just refresh, let's see if it's all working okay. Seems good, that message is gone. We're all done. We've got WooZone installed, we've got Kingdom installed. Um, we've basically got everything installed that we need um, to be installed. So now we're ready to um, start making this website our own, adding some products, adding some content, getting it all up and running and live. So on to the next step. So the next few steps in this tutorial are all around adding content to your website. Now I'm doing the content before I do any of the appearance stuff, so things like adding a logo, changing the colors, that kind of thing. I'm gonna do the content first because content is far more important than how your website actually looks. It's gonna be the content that brings traffic to your website and it's gonna be the content that sends that traffic off to Amazon to convert and to place an order and so that you earn some commission. So with this sort of site, we've got two different types of content. We've got products and we've got blog content, so things like articles. They're both very important and I recommend that you have both. Um, you add some products to your site and then you add some blog content too. And then ideally, you link the two together and I'm gonna show you how to do that as we go forward. So for example, you'd write an article around some certain products, maybe it's a review, maybe it's a guide, and then you link to those products on your site. 
When it comes to adding products, I'm gonna show you how to do it in two different ways. First way I'm gonna show you is by using the Chrome extension that comes with WooZone. By using the extension, you can add products without an Amazon API key, so that's perfect for you guys that are just starting out that when you haven't been fully approved by Amazon and you don't have access to the API key, you can add some products this way. It is a bit slower um, than using the API key, but it does work. And then the second way, I'm gonna show you how to use the insane import mode, which does use the API key and allows you to pull in products very quickly, and you can pull in a large amount of products in no time at all. So let's add some products. First thing we need to do is we need to install the WooZone browser extension. Now it works with Google Chrome. Google Chrome is available for both PC and Mac. If it's not your browser of choice at the moment, then you're gonna need to go and install it just to search on Google for Google Chrome. You'll find it, install the browser. It looks like this, it's the one that I'm using. Once you've done that, come uh, to your site and log in and then go to the dashboard. And then go to WooZone. And then the first option, or maybe the second option below dashboard is direct import extension. If we give that a click, uh, it comes over here. And you've got this link, get the WooZone or WZone direct import extension here. Let's give that a click. Takes us off to the um, Chrome store, now I've already got it installed, actually it says it's disabled so I just need to enable it. You'll need to click the green button up here which will say add to Chrome and once you do that, and it's enabled like uh, like that, you then get this little W up here and then you're ready to go. So let's go back to our site and make sure the API URL is the same as your uh, website URL. Uh, which it is for me, and then click Generate New Key. And you get a whole load of letters and things like that. Click Save the Settings. Okay, that's saved. Now we've got this message come up across the top that says, do you want to authorize? And let's click Authorize. It says the website is successfully added. We're ready to go. If this message doesn't pop up for you straight away, just refresh the page and your browser should come up. And then you're all good. Now the next step is to add some categories. So you're gonna need to have an idea of the sort of products you're gonna be importing. Hopefully you do by now. Um, of course you can add um, product categories at a later date, but um, we're gonna add a few now. So product categories are basically logical ways that we can group products together. It will become clear in a second. So I'm gonna to go to products and I'm gonna to go to categories. Now I've got an idea of the sort of categories that I want to add because I've already got some blog content written out, uh, which I'll be showing you very shortly. And um, within that blog content, I've got um, some links to products. You're obviously gonna go over to Amazon and do some research in your niche or niche, depending on how you like to say it. And you should have an idea in terms of the categories that you want to add products to. So let's add a new category. You can just start typing in this box here. First one is all around showering and bathing your dog. So I'm gonna call it showering, with a little and sign and a bathing like that. It's perfect. I'll leave all the rest the same. You can add a thumbnail if you like. That does sometimes appear around the site. So a thumbnail would be an image, so I'd find an image of some bathing products and I could add that, but uh, I'll leave it blank for now. There we go, that's added. Next category is all around dog walking. So I'm gonna type dog walking in here. And in there would add loads of dog walking products. And we'll do that in a minute anyway. Click add new category. Now when it comes to adding categories, you can uh, organize them in a kind of hierarchical, easy for me to say, hierarchical uh, structure. So for example, you could have you know dog walking and then below that you might have leads. Uh, harnesses, that kind of thing. If you wanna add a subcategory um, like leads, you could simply type it in like that. And then you set the parent category as dog walking and then add new category. Then leads kind of sits below that and it's a nice way to kind of structure your site. However, I'm not gonna do that right now. I just wanted to show you how it works in case you want to do it that way. 
And of course, when you're importing products, you get the um, option to decide which category those products are gonna be put into. The next category is all around fitness for your dog. Uh, maybe we'll call it dog fitness, be better for SEO. And I don't want any parent category, just gonna add that. And I've got a couple more that I wanna add. Um, next one is puppy training. Of course, you may not know all the categories um, of products that you're gonna be adding right now, so don't worry, just add a couple to get you started and then you can always come back and add some more at a later date. So we've got the puppy training, we've got the fitness, we've got walking, we've got showering and bathing. And then the final one is gonna be cameras, dog cameras. And then add new category. So that's perfect, we've got our categories um, added now. And then what we can do is we can add these categories as uh, a menu on our site. So across the top of the site where you have your, your links, um, we can have these added. So let's do that now. To do that, I'm gonna go into appearance and menus. Then I need to give the menu a name. Let's just call it main menu. It's a good name because it's gonna be the main menu. And then down here we've got all the things that we can add. So we can add pages. These are the pages we've got on our site. Not many right now, just the kind of standard shopping pages. Posts, so if you had any blog posts, you could add them. But what I want is product categories. Now I can't see product categories here. So if you can't see product categories, either you need to come at the top, go to screen options, then tick uh, product categories. Quite sure what that warning is, I'm not too worried. <laughs> let's close that and now we've got the product categories and let's go to view all and here they are. Let's add all of those like that. And then I'm gonna tick the display location as the main navigation. We might use these other ones later. There we go. So now if we're gonna take a look at the site See, I've got my um, my links there across the top. It's looking pretty basic at the moment, I will say, but you know, it's gonna get there. So let's add some products. So the first way I'm gonna add products is using that Chrome extension that we just installed. And let's do some things around the showering and bathing uh, category to start with. So I've got a number of articles that I'm gonna to add to the site very shortly, so I know roughly the kind of products that I need to add. So to use the Chrome extension and to add some products to our site, we need to head over to Amazon. I'm gonna to go to amazon.co.uk, as that's the site I'm promoting. And we've got this bar now across the top, which is from the extension that we installed. That means it's working. First thing I'm gonna add is a Ferminator, which is a dog brush thing. <laughs> so I'm doing a search on Amazon. And basically you just need to find the products now that you want to add. So we've got this one here. Is this one for a dog or for a cat? Dogs, cats. Also, I don't think it's an official one, is it? Hmm, I don't know. Well, these look quite good. Well, let's take a look at this one, looks looks pretty good. Um, so I'm just gonna click through to the product page. And we now get this special bar across the top, which allows us to import products into our site. So as I said earlier, this method is best if you haven't currently got an API key. If you do have an API key, we'll be importing in a different way and I'll show you that very shortly. So this product has got five variations. You can have it for long hair, short hair, and there's different sizes available. So you probably wanna import all of those. So let's import all variations. I'm gonna click the little cloud. I'm just gonna go away and do its thing. There we go, the product has been added. If we click view the product, here it is. It's Bought in all the images, bought in the variations, so you know you can select long hair, short hair, and the size. It's only bought in the sizes that are actually available on Amazon at the time. There's a few that are out of stock. Now, Woozone will update 
your products every single night with stock levels and prices, so you don't have to worry about that. And as you scroll down, people can select quantity and then add to cart. In fact, there should be an add to cart button there. In fact, it is there, but it's white. So uh, don't worry too much about that just yet. When we adjust the colors a bit later on in the video, then that button will appear. Now, you're probably thinking, but we didn't add it to any categories. Those categories that we just set up, we didn't get to select them. And you're absolutely right, we didn't. And there's a reason for that. There's a slight bug in um, the Chrome extension as it stands at the moment. Now, maybe by the time you're watching it, it will be working properly. What you're supposed to be able to do uh, when you're importing, so um, when you're on this page, it says there's a duplicate product now because I've just imported it. Um, but yeah, you're able to. You're normally able to come over here and then on the free little line burger menu, you are able to select a category. Now, unfortunately, it only allows you to select categories that have products in them. And obviously, those categories that we just set up, they don't have any products in, so they're not appearing. So what it's done is it's imported um, this product into the Amazon category. So the workaround is this. We're gonna add a uh, product into each of these categories and then it will work as, uh, as as it should. If you're confused, don't worry. I'm just gonna show you how it works right now and it will become clear. So let's edit this product. While I'm looking at it, I'm gonna click Edit Product. I'm on my website. And here's the category down the side here so we can see that it's added to dogs, grooming, shedding tools which is not the categories that I set up. This has been imported from Amazon. I don't want to use these because Amazon categories can get quite messy. I want it in my showering and bathing category. Although I may need to rename that later because I don't know if a brush logically fits in there, but for this example, it's fine. So I'm gonna add it to showering and bathing, click update. Okay, so now that's in the correct category. Because I like to keep things nice and tidy, I'm just gonna delete those Amazon categories that came in, which are these three. So I'm just gonna tick those. I've gone into, uh, under products into categories, I'm just gonna tick these and delete. Okay. And we can see that there is one product in our showering and bathing. So now when we go back to Amazon, and say we wanted to add another showering and bathing product, which I do because I'm gonna have a few products in that category. Next one is a Glan Top. I'm gonna to put Glan Top pet, which is a cleaning thing for a dog. There we go. Oh, that dog looks like he's enjoying himself, doesn't he? So this is a weird kind of washing thing. I thought it was pretty cool. And you can click either one. I mean, this, this product doesn't actually have any variations, so this one is probably fine. But before I do that, I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna click on the burger menu, and now we've got our showering and bathing category showing because it's got a product in it. So hopefully that makes sense. You need to add one product manually by importing it and it, letting it go into the Amazon categories, then moving that product into the relevant category that you just set up earlier. And then you can delete those Amazon categories. It's a bit of a pain and maybe by the time you watch this video, AA team, the developers of uh, WooZone will have fixed it and it will detect the correct um, categories even if they don't have products in them. So let's select showering and bathing. Let's click this button to add it. it says it's done it, let's click view the product. And there we go, again, the add to cart button's not showing. I'm gonna show you how to make it show very shortly. So. Hopefully that's clear enough now so that you can see how to add products using the Chrome extension. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add a few products using the insane import mode. Now this mode uses the Amazon API key um, that I added earlier. So if you've got an Amazon API key, you're gonna be able to uh, do it this way. If you haven't, you can probably skip this step and uh, move on to the next bit, which is when I'm gonna be adding some blog content. I'll put a time up on the screen now so you can skip forward. Then obviously you can come back to this point once you've got your Amazon API keys and, and, and do this bit. Let's add a few more bathing products using the insane import mode. So I'm gonna go into the dashboard. 
What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a load more therminators because there seem to be a few on there and using this uh, import mode will be a really quick way of doing that. So you go down to WooZone and then you go to insane mode import. Then if we scroll down, we'll find that we've got a search for products box here. And we can just type in a keyword. It gives some suggestions. Let's go for Ferminator for dogs. Select a department if you want. This can be handy if you want to kind of refine the results that are coming up. Let's go for pet supplies. And you can go even deeper if you want and go for dogs. And that's probably uh, enough. You can set um, maximum prices, minimum prices, manufacturers, whatever you like really. Then this bottom option allows you to select how many pages of results you're gonna import. So I'm gonna go for first five. It really depends on how many products you want to bring in. And of course the relevance is not so good as you go uh, into more pages. So let's click launch search. So it's just bringing down the products from Amazon. Takes a few moments. And we're all done. So we've got a tick, so everything seems to be okay. And then here it will show us the products that it's found. If we click this button here, we can see all of them. So we've got some more Ferminator tools, we've got a gift box, some shampoo. So you basically wanna have a look through here, any products that you don't wanna import, like these ones, I haven't got any images, so you can just untick them. Just make sure they're all relevant and they all look like they're working okay. That one's not either. And then when you're happy, come down to this panel. I'm gonna leave the images set to all because I want all the images to come down. I'm gonna leave the variations on all as well because I want all the variations. I'm gonna leave the spin on import ticked. And as I said earlier, that will basically rewrite the copy for me. And I'm gonna leave import attributes ticked as well. Here we can select the category. So I'm gonna put it into my shower and bathing category. If you don't select one and leave it on use category from Amazon, it will create some categories and your site can get into a bit of a mess if you do it that way. I'm gonna leave it on do it now as I find that works better and then click import products. It's gonna take a few moments. Okay, so it's finished. Now there's been a few that it hasn't been able to import because of the setting that I set earlier where I'm set to only import products that are from Amazon themselves and not from third parties. So if you're not getting enough products coming in, you can always go and adjust that setting. You'll find it in the Amazon config under WooZone. So let's have a look at the products. If we go into products over here and go to all products, that's where we'll find them. See, they're all here. Of course, if we go to the front of our website, if we take a look in the showing and, uh, did I do a typo? Uh, looks like I did. Okay, well, let me just uh, click on here, then I'll show you how you can edit these categories. Me and my typing. So here in showing and bathing, <laughs> silly me, uh, we can see our products and yeah, here they all are. They look a little bit weird at the moment because they're all just in one column, but we can adjust that uh, in a moment when we get onto doing the appearance of the site. So yeah, if you've made a typo and you need to make a correction, you can just simply edit the category when you're looking at it. Change it to showering. That's better. Click update. Let's go back and have a look. That's better. It's not changed in the menu though, so we can adjust that by going into menus and then finding the relevant category, clicking the little arrow and correcting it. Let's click save. There we go, that looks better. Okay, so we've got all the typos fixed. For those of you that may have watched my videos before, you'll know that I tend to leave in the odd mistake here or there just to show you how I get around them and just to show that I'm human like, like you guys and you are gonna make a few mistakes when you're setting up a website, that's fine. You can always fix them, typos, that kind of stuff. But yeah, 
we've got that fixed. Let's just have a look at the category one last time with all our lovely products. Here we go. Oh, it's uh, it's displaying properly now. You remember a moment ago, it was just kind of displaying uh, like a big stretched image. It's okay now, that could have been to do with my browser cache um, or something like that, but hey, it's fine now. So yeah, got a nice layout of uh, four columns and all the products looking good. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an article to the blog, show you how to do that. And, uh, and then we've kind of got some content on, and then probably what I'll do is, uh, while well, I'm not recording, I'll add a whole load more products and articles just to fill out the site to uh, get it nice and full of content. Then we can move on to the styling and appearance and get the site looking really nice and of course, uh, put together the home page uh, and maybe add a few other pages that we might need like about us, privacy policy, that kind of thing. But anyway, on to the next step, which is um, adding some blog content. So before I add some content, there's just one little change that I wanna to make to the website and that is the permalinks. Now the permalinks are basically the structure of the URLs that we're gonna be generating with the site. So anything that comes after the domain name up here, after the slash, uh, we can affect how that looks. At the moment, uh, let's just go and have a look at the settings. If we go into settings and permalink. At the moment, it is like this, it's got like slash index.php, then it adds the year, month, day, and, and post name to, to generate the website addresses. This is a bit messy for me, so I'm gonna just take this out uh, by selecting all of it, clearing it out. I want a very simple structure, I think it's better for SEO and I just think it looks tidier. And the structure that I'm gonna go for is I'm gonna have the category, and then I'm gonna have the post name. That's it. So somebody come in here, click on those, click category, click post name, it will generate this for you, and then you'll have a real nice um, permalink structure. Once you've done that, come down to the bottom and click save changes. All the rest is fine with regards to products and, and that kind of stuff. It's best to get this done fairly early on, otherwise when you start doing links and stuff, um, they'll all be wrong. <laughs> so that's all done and we're now ready to uh, start adding some content to the blog. Okay, so we're gonna be adding some articles to our website. Now, content is really important when it comes to running an Amazon affiliate website. It's a great way of attracting traffic to your site because you're able to target different keywords um, with your articles. Now, be sure to check out some other videos I've got on my channel, including a full playlist around keyword research and how to find ideas um, for articles um, and everything to do with that. It's a great way of getting ranked on the search engines. Um, I mean, your products will rank as well, but you can get some really good quality traffic with articles and it's a good way of keeping your site fresh and showing that you're adding more value than just kind of copying Amazon by just becoming a mini e-commerce site. So I've got 10 articles here that have already been written for me. Now I've paid a writer to create these for me and they're all around, I think 1500 words long, basically the longer the better when it comes to articles and the search engines. Um, I found a writer over on Upwork, and yeah, I just gave her some ideas in terms of what I wanted all around dogs and uh, the kind of products that I wanted to promote, and she's come back with these these articles. So let's take a look at one of them, say this one, which is uh, the first one I'm gonna be adding because it includes some of the products that I've already added, including the Ferminator, that kind of thing. So I'm just gonna open it up in Word and then all we need to do is kind of copy and paste it. Now, of course, you can write your own articles. Um, that's fine if, you, if you're into writing. I say you want them to be around 1,500 words. This one's 1,451 words, which is near enough. And you want to try and add some you know, real value in your articles, maybe review some products, maybe offer some sort of guide around some products, that kind of thing. So this one is all around dog sharing and bathing essentials. So we've got a bit of blurb about why it's a good idea to wash your dog. Uh, <laughs> Kind of obvious, he'll smell better, that kind of stuff. I've also got some images um, which have been provided with the article. And when it comes to using images, make sure that you've got the rights to use them. Uh, don't just kind of go on Google and, and take anything that you can find because they may be copyrighted and if you don't give uh, the correct credit or if you don't pay the royalties, whatever, you could get in trouble. And uh, these images are all good. Um, and then we've got the gadgets here, the Ferminator. I mean, I could probably add a few more images, that kind of thing. So 
Let's start adding it and um, we'll see how we get on. So let's go back to the website. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new post. So WordPress is generally made up of posts and pages. Pages are more static, they don't change very often, they don't have a date, so things like your homepage, the about us, privacy policy, contact us, their pages. Um, your blog content is uh, goes on posts, so any articles or news updates, that kind of thing would be a post. So I'm gonna go new post. Okay, and here we go. So the add new post page is very similar to the uh, add new page page. Uh, the editor and everything is pretty much the same. So the first thing is to add the title of the article. So let's just go back into Word and copy and paste. There we go. So you can just copy and paste um, straight in from Word. Let's take this first bit of text. I'm gonna add the images in a moment. There we go, that's the first bit of text. Then let's have a look what else we've got. Got a nice big image there. Let's add this heading. Why is it a good idea to bathe your dog? So I paste that in, it's come across as a heading two from Word. So if I just highlight it, I've got this selector here to adjust what level of heading it should be. It's a good idea to use headings within your content and basically just format your article in a nice readable way with headings and bullet points and bold and italics and all the kind of formatting you'd expect in a document. I'll leave it as a heading two for now and we'll have a look at what it looks like when we publish it. If it's too big, I can always turn it down to a heading three or four. So let's add uh, an image. I've got some images saved on my computer for this article. So just go to add media. Then we can select from our computer, go to the right folder, some bathing photos here. And I think this one here, wet dog will be fine. By the way, I'll put some links in the description of this video of places where you can get some photos. I like iStock Photo and Shutterstock, they're very good. You do have to pay though for the images, but they're, they're very high quality. And you know that when you paid for an image, it's yours and you can use it and you'd have to worry about any copyright uh, implications. So I'm just gonna click Insert into Post. There he is, you obviously got some formatting, you can just oh, click here, like right or left or center. I think I'll put him over to the right for now, we'll see how that looks. Let's go back and get some more text. Just gonna paste that in on this line here. But I think I want the image above, so you can just drag the image around, I'll put it there. That looks good. Next bit is some handy tips on another image. Let's copy that and paste. Let's add that uh, muddy dog image. In fact, what I'll do, I'm gonna add the text first. Might be easier. So copy, paste. And add media again, upload files. Dog in mud. You can add a caption or some alt text and things if you'd like. That could be beneficial for SEO, so it might be worth doing so. You just basically describe what the image is in words. Uh, you can do your alignment here and you can also adjust the size of your images uh, as well if you want the full size, medium or thumbnail. And you can even add a link um, to the images if you like. There we go, I want that to the right actually. There we go, that image might be a little bit big. You can kind of resize it with a little drag and drop like that. So uh, let's carry on, add a bit more text. And then what we're gonna need to do is go through and kind of uh, link all these products. If I haven't got the product on the site, I'm gonna need to go back into WooZone and add it. Or of course you could link straight off to Amazon. Although I prefer to link to the products on the site, um, I think it just looks better, keeps it all tidy and um, is good in Google's eyes because Google doesn't like too many affiliate links on one page. We're gonna copy all of this stuff. And 
to just remove that space there. So here we go, we've got the Ferminator here. So I have already got the Ferminator on the site. So what I'll probably do is I'll change this bit here where we've got this link to Amazon. And I'll uh, just put check out Ferminator. And I'm gonna make this bold and then make it a link. So to add, uh, to make this a link, I'm just gonna highlight this uh, bit of text, click the chain button, then I can start typing in uh, this box. I could just paste a URL in if I knew the URL that I wanna link to. I can then choose the product I want to link to. Now, of course, I could create multiple links to different products, if you know, because I've got quite a few Ferminators. I could even create a Ferminator category and add all of the products to that and then link through to that. Um, that might be a good thing to do. But for now, I'm just gonna link straight through to the product just for this example. So I don't know which one's which, but hey, let's go for that one. And let's click the Enter button and then that link has been added. So now I need to go through and basically add all the uh, different products and the links. Um, I may want to even add um, an image. Now the best way to add an image is to um, take it straight from Amazon because Amazon aren't very keen on you downloading images to your site and uh, using them. They'd like you to kind of pull them in dynamically. So it's really easy. What you can do is just go over to Amazon and find the product you want. So the Ferminator, one with a nice image I want. So, you know, this is fine. Any of these are fine. Uh, that's that's a cat one, let's not go for that one. So say I wanted to add this image um, to my article. I'm just gonna get rid of the W zone thing because it's a little bit in the way. And you can see that behind it, there is the Amazon site stripe. Yeah, that does get in the way a little bit. Can I move that? No. I'll probably even turn it off. Can I turn it off? Uh, not right now. But anyway, we can see behind we've got image and text. If I click image, there is the image. And then it gives me this bit of code down here. All I need to do is just copy that into my clipboard. Go back here. Uh, decide where I want to put the image, which is obviously around here. I need to just switch to the text editor. This allows us to see the kind of code and things that um, are going on uh, on the post. So here is the Ferminator. Then I'm just gonna uh, paste it before the text, like that. If we go back to the visual editor, there we go. I did actually want it to align right, but it's not, so I'm just gonna click there, there we go. So that's the image added. So I so said, I'll go through and I will add the rest of the products. And uh, let me just show you a few other things that you need to know when it comes to posts. You've got some categories over here, so you can place your articles into logical categories. So this one uh, could go into a category called articles, or maybe even how-to guides, that sounds better. And you can just add the new category it will automatically tick it and add your article. You can add your article to multiple categories if you like. You can add some tags, so you know, shampoo, dog bathing, dog shower, kind of thing. Tags are useful um, for the site because it allows it to know uh, which uh, articles are similar. So it's good for like recommended posts and stuff like that. You don't have to add tags, but it's good practice to add a few. And the final thing is the featured image, and this is the image that's gonna appear around the site when people are looking at your blog page, for example. It'll also appear at the top of the article. So you want a nice, big, clear, striking image. So let's uh, find one, I'm gonna click Set Featured Image, Upload Files, and this one I think is a good one, Lab in Bath. There we go. Set featured image, there he is. So let's just click publish for now and take a look. Whenever you make any changes on WordPress, you always wanna click the publish or the update button. Make sure that you save everything. And let's click view post. Uh, 
There's our image at the top. I think I might need to just adjust the image because it's it's been chopped off. So I will do that in a second. It's good to get the kind of ratios and everything right. Then here is our article. There's our image. There we go, it's looking good. So I'm just gonna go through and finish off this article, add the rest of the links, and then what we'll do is we'll set up the blog page and uh, then I will go away and I'll add a whole load more articles and, and really fill out the site. Okay, so I've finished formatting and basically styling and kind of putting the whole article together, the dog sharing and bathing essentials. Here it is. Um, there's a couple of other little tweaks I'm gonna do right now while I'm recording. Um, but as you can see, yeah, I've added all the images, we've got all the products on here, linking through to the products on the website. So I've kind of you know imported loads of products as well. So if we just click this one, you'll see, go through and have a look at the hairdryer on the site. There it is, very nice. Now the images are imported using the site stripe as I showed you earlier. Actually just a note on that, I didn't mention that you do have to um, make sure that you select the right tracking ID. So let me just quickly find a product that'll do. Uh, when you go up here and you know you wanna add an image or whatever, just make sure that you select the right tracking ID. You've probably only got one if you've just registered so it's nothing to worry about but if you've got more than one you're just gonna to wanna to make sure that that's, that's correct. Okay, so what I wanna show you first of all, let me just go in and edit the post, is I've added a few lines, these things here. Ooh, why does it do that jump? I don't know why it jumped up. These lines, now to add them, you just simply press this horizontal line button. It's quite a nice way of kind of separating stuff up, very easy thing to do. If you don't see these extra buttons, then you just need to click on this toggle toolbar um, thing here, and then you get a few extra options when you're editing. So that's the line that I've added there. The other thing that I've done is I've removed all the prices from the article. Now, Amazon don't like you putting prices within articles any, anything to do with price basically because it can go out of date very quickly. Amazon prices change all the time and they don't want you, you know, telling people the wrong price basically. Now it's fine to have prices on your products that you import with WooZone, that's fine because they update automatically every night anyway. But obviously when you've written something in an article that's not gonna update automatically and it's gonna go out of date really quickly. So my advice is do not put prices in your articles. There's one last thing that I want to show you on this article. And that is, I've noticed that when you do a uh, do some bullet points like these, they're not the right font size. As you can see they're smaller than the, the rest of the text. Uh, it looks a bit weird. Now there's no option on the theme to change the font size of the bullet points. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of custom CSS. Oh, uh, don't worry, that's may sound technical, but it's not, not so bad. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna generate the bit of code that I'm gonna uh, put into my custom CSS box, which you'll see in a second. And I'll put that code uh, on the relevant blog post over at wpeagle.com, and you'll find a link to it in the description of this video, uh, a link to the blog post on my blog, wpeagle.com, and it has all the code snippets and everything you need. So it's pretty straightforward. But basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna generate a little bit of CSS using the inspector. You won't have to do this, all you're gonna to need to do is copy the bit of code. I just wanna show you how I do it and I've actually got some other videos on using the inspector and stuff to do customizations. I'm typing in a CSS um, attribute font size and then is it 18? Does that look about the right size? I should probably check what size the uh, this font is. What size is this? It's 18, wow, what a guess, what a guess. So now they're all the same size, looks a bit better. So I'm just gonna copy this little bit of CSS and close this inspector. Then I'm gonna go into customize. Then within customize, we've got, uh, right down the bottom, we've got this additional CSS. And then I could just paste my bit of code in like that, click publish. And we're done. So all you're gonna need to do is head over to wpeagle.com, find this blog post, 
find this little snippet of code, copy it, and then you can paste it into your additional CSS um, section as well. Let's see what that's done. We scroll down, yeah. It's all the same size now, which is perfect. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go away and, and again, I'm gonna do a little edit now in the video, but I'm gonna go off and I am gonna add another nine articles um, to the site, which is gonna take me a little while, I think. But I think it's worth spending a bit of time putting together articles and making sure they look nice and all that, because they'll uh, they'll pay dividends in the future when they attract some traffic to your site and, and generate some sales. So yeah, I'm gonna add some uh, more articles, I'm gonna add another nine, because I think 10 articles is a great place to start when you're launching a site, it kind of, you know, you've got a bit of content in there, it fills out the site nicely. Along with those articles, I'm gonna need to add some more products, so I'll be filling up these categories with products, so I'll be adding some dog cameras, some fitness stuff, walking stuff, and puppy training things. Once I've done all that, uh, we'll then continue the video and. I guess you're gonna to need to go off and add some content as well to your site. Of course, you can always add it at the end, that's fine. It's up to you. Uh, if you don't wanna you know, waste time adding content right now, you could carry on and do some styling and all that kind of stuff first, and then add your content later. It's entirely up to you. But once I've added all that stuff, we're then gonna add the blog page, uh, probably add it on the end here, where it says blog, and then people can click through and see all the articles in one place. So yeah, let's do an edit. And then yeah, I'll be right back and we'll, we'll set up that blog page. Okay, so I've got all my articles on the site, all 10 of them, here they all are, looking good. We're just currently looking at the homepage here. Um, I'll just click through. Obviously we haven't done the homepage yet, we're gonna be doing that in a few moments. But yeah, all the articles are on, it took a little while um, to get them all looking nice. I spent a couple of hours on it, but it's all done now. And I'm happy all the products are imported too that are related to uh, the articles. So all these categories have got some things in now. Got the dog security with uh, all the cameras and things like that. So a couple of things I just wanna mention before I add the blog page over here. The first is I adjusted the height of this image, this featured image. Um, by default, it's quite uh, shallow in terms of its height and it was cutting quite a bit of the image off, so I wanted it a bit higher. The way I did that was I added some custom CSS again, so in Customize, and then down in Additional CSS, I've added this little bit of code here. You'll find it over on wpeagle.com on the relevant blog post. You'll find a link in the description to this video. You can adjust this number to adjust the height of the photo so that it kind of works for you. So let's set up our blog page. So I'm just gonna close this. So you can call it blog or articles or news, whatever you like. I think I'm gonna go for blog. Uh, so I'm gonna create new page. So I'm gonna enter a name here, I'm gonna call it blog. But I said you can call it whatever you like. Don't need to add anything in the content box. I'm gonna come across here and I'm gonna select under template, template blog. Then I'm gonna click publish. Now we need to set this page as the blog page and to do that, I'm gonna come down and go into settings and then reading. I'm gonna click this button here where it says a static page. And then for the post page, I'm gonna select blog. We're gonna come back in here later and set the home page. Let's click save changes. Now the final thing we need to do is just add that page to our menu. So appearance and then menus. Then tick the blog page, click add to menu. And there it is, save menu. By the way, in here you can uh, kind of drag and drop stuff around as you wanna um, organize it. You can also bring stuff across slightly to make it like a sub menu. It gives you that kind of drop down effect if you want to. But anyway, let's have a look at the site. It says do I wanna save, I don't, because I've already saved. So if we click on blog over here, there we go, we've got a blog page. 
it looks the same as the home page right now um, because we haven't added our home page, which is something we're going to be doing in a few moments. Um, but there we go. The final thing I want to do is there is a post. Let me just show you that was already on uh, the site. This one here called Hello World, and I'm going to delete that. I don't need that. So let me just show you where all the blog posts are. If we go into dashboard, and then posts and all posts. Here's all our posts, and then there's that hello world. Don't want that, click trash. And it's gone. You can do exactly the same with pages and all pages and products too. So if you've imported some products and you decide that you don't actually want those products on your site, just come into the product section and you can see all of your products and then you can uh, trash them if you need to. Or of course you can edit them if you need to. If you wanna remove um, a few in one go, you just simply tick which ones you wanna get rid of. And under bulk actions, you can move to trash. You'd click apply to make that happen. So that's the blog all done, that's the content added, that's the products added. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna do a little bit of styling, I'm gonna add my logo, maybe set some colors, adjust the fonts, that kind of thing, and then we'll do the homepage. And then we're pretty much there. There'll just be a few final tasks that are a good idea to do, like adding Google Analytics and submitting to Webmaster Console. But yeah, we're nearly there. Well done if you've got this far in the video, you're doing really well. And yeah, before long we'll have a site up and running. So, on to the next section. So next thing we're gonna do is the styling on the website. So I'm gonna be adding a logo and changing the colors. So I'm gonna be using this logo, which is um, a template that I purchased from graphicriver.net. You'll find a link in the description of this video. It is an affiliate link, so thank you very much if you use it. So on Graphic River, you can find loads of logo templates. There's tons on here, so you should be able to find something suitable for you. Once you've purchased it, you'll need to edit it in your favorite graphics package, maybe Photoshop, something like that. If you don't fancy doing that, then take a look on my channel. I've got a few videos around creating a logo. There's a number of online tools um, that can help you get a logo uh, put together really easily. So let's go back to the site. So let's take a look at my logo. Got it just here. There it is. As you can see, all I've done is change the text and move it to the side. Nothing too fancy. So let's add it to the site. To do that, I'm gonna go into Customize, then Logo, Select Image, Upload Files, Select Files, and I'm gonna find it on my computer. There it is. And then choose Image. There we go, let's click Publish. That's done, let's just close that and take a look. There we go. So next thing I wanna adjust is the colors. I'm gonna use the colors that I've got in my logo. I've used a dripper tool to identify the color codes on these. Uh, I've got them in my notes just here. There we go. So I'm gonna just copy this to my clipboard. This is the orange color code. You can find a dripper tool, by the way, in most uh, graphics packages. May even be one online, possibly. So let's go back into Customize. Then we're gonna scroll down and go into Colors. So the primary color, I want to be the orange. Like that. And then the secondary color. Don't worry too much about this preview, it doesn't look right to me. Uh, don't worry about that. Uh, the second color, I'm gonna be uh, using this yellow. Let's paste that in like that. And for the menu background, I'm also gonna use this uh, kind of gold orangey color. 
Oh, that didn't quite paste properly. No, that's not right. Need to practice my copy and pasting. There we go. And then for the menu state color, I'm gonna put that to white because I think white will look good on these background colors. So let's publish that. Let's close and take a look. There we go. Doesn't look too bad. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a play with these fonts. I'm not too keen on this font. The other thing I've just noticed is this menu, for whatever reason, is not quite sitting uh, in the middle. So I think maybe a little bit of custom CSS might be needed just to tidy that up. So let's do that now. Let's get this looking a little bit uh, nicer on the eye. I'm gonna just generate a bit of CSS. Again, you don't need to worry about this. I'm gonna put it on the blog post on WP Eagle, so all you need to do is copy and paste. If you wanna adjust your uh, main menu. So I can see a little bit of padding in here. That's probably what we need to adjust. I'm thinking around 20, oh, not 72, 25. Ah, look at that. That looks much better. I'm just gonna copy this. Then go into Customize. So yeah, all you need to do is copy and paste my code from uh, WP Eagle. I can't put it in the YouTube description, I'm afraid. I don't know, they don't let me post uh, any code in there. So we don't need any of this. There we go, publish. Let's close and take a look. There we go, that's looking quite nice. So yeah, let's have a play with the fonts. We just check everything's looking okay on the product side of things. Yeah, the buttons have changed color. Prices have changed color to match. If we take a look at the product, it's all looking good. Oh, and look, now we've set some colors. The add to cart button is working fine as well. So um, do you remember it wasn't showing earlier? I guess that was just because we hadn't set our colors. So that's working as well. So yeah, fonts, if we go into customize again, and then we've got this theme fonts uh, section. In here we can change um, the fonts. Let me just see. Uh, so at the moment we've got Rajdahani. Is that how you say it? And if we can just change it like that. And something should change. Yeah. So this is the main kind of body font. You can go for whatever you want to go for. Um. There's loads to choose from, as you can see. So let's have a look at a few of these fonts. Italiano. You want something nice and clear? Well, I do. <laughs> I think that's good for, then that's not clear at all. That's some kind of handwriting type font. So just take some time, come through here and uh, you know click around. If you wanna investigate them further, you can head over to Google Fonts. That might be an easy way to browse. Find something you like. Mm, that's a bit techy. Something softer than that. What's Buddha like? Yeah, it's a little bit kind of newspapery for me. So let me just go through here and see what I can find. I'm going to do an edit. I don't want you to sit and watch me scrolling through loads of fonts. Okay, I've gone for average sons, sons, whatever, for the body. So we can also adjust the size if we want to, make it bigger or smaller, just adjust that number, I'm happy with 14. Let's adjust the um, headings font. I've got an idea what I want. I think I wanna go for something that's similar to my logo font, and I think this will be similar to the logo font. Let's have a look. Yeah, if you look, it is. That's kind of a fun font, let's go for that. The main menu font, this is this one here, we can adjust that, let's go for another, uh, let's go for the same as the heading, I think. See what it looks like. 
Again, you can adjust the sizes and weights, so the weight is how bold it is. Um, for all the different types of fonts that you've got on the site, including your headings, um, all the way up to H6. Oh, I'm not sure if that is gonna work in the menu, that font is a little bit chunky. Maybe if we turn the weight down, oh, it's as low as it will go. Uh, maybe turn the font size up. Let's publish and have a look. Okay, I'm just gonna close to see what it looks like. Okay, I I don't think it's quite clear enough. I, I like the font, but yeah, it's not quite clear enough for the menu. It, it looks fine here, but not um, when it's white and on the orange. So let's go back and just adjust that a little bit more. So let's adjust it. Maybe let's just go with the, the same as the body, which was the sans one. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty boring, but it, it does the job. Let's maybe just make it a little bit uh, bigger, 22. And publish. Ah, it's a little bit too big now. You see how it's gone onto two lines? I don't think a menu should ever go onto two lines, so I'm gonna have to bring that font size down uh, just a little bit, or I'd need to adjust um, the words that I'm using, but I don't want to do that. So let's just put the font size down again. It's gonna have to be 20, fair enough. Okay. So while we're in these options, let's take a look at um, this top bar across the uh, the top here. <laughs> Obviously a good place for a top bar. If we come in here, we've got top bar and you can add a phone number if you like, or not, you can just take it out. Now you can even turn off the top bar if you want, if you don't want this uh, stuff going across the top. But I think it's good to have your social uh, links if you've got social profiles. If you haven't, then you probably will wanna turn it off. I'm just gonna click publish on that. I'll show you how you can adjust these uh, social links. They're under header social options. And you can decide if you wanna turn them on or off. And you can set the URLs of your social media. Now I haven't got any set up just yet for Bow Wow Tech, but I will be setting some up and then I'll come back in here and I'll add them. Let's just have a look at a few other options in here. You've got some shop options where you can adjust the template, which affects how the shop and the products are laid out. You just how many products are shown per page on the category pages. Turn off the star rating if you like. Uh, some other star rating settings there. You can show product details, general description. I'll leave that on. This setting allows you to adjust whether you're gonna use the first paragraph from the product, from the product content for the product details general description or your, the WooCommerce short description. Show product details, turn that on and off. Show product category, turn that on and off. Show product tags. Show percentage discount instead of sale label. It's up to you, you can turn that on. You decide when you want the discount percentage thing to show, when it's more than 5%. Here we've got an option around top filters for the uh, shop page, I'm not using them, but you could uh, use them if you wanted. You just add them in the widget section. And we've got bottom filters as well. I'm not gonna use either of them, so let me just turn those off. Publish. There's a few options here around the blog. If you wanna show the date, the comments, um, or the category, you can turn that on or off in there. You've got some footer options here, so you can adjust the text that is right down here, so it might be um, let me just get rid of all of this. Copyright 2018 WP Eagle. And you can add a web address as well. I wanted to make that word here a link. I just have to add a pointy bracket and then an A and then href, then an equals, then a speech marks, then I type in the web address here. Which I don't have just yet because I haven't uploaded the video. Because I want to link to this video that you're watching right now. Um, so yeah, you put the web address in there between the speech marks, then another trial bracket thing pointing the other way. And then you get to the other side of the word that you want to make a link. Triangle bracket slash a triangle bracket. Simple as that. Just copy it exactly, you'll be fine. You can have the partners module on in the footer, we haven't got to that yet, but that basically allows you to add some logos. And you can add some URLs 
Um, for these, let me just show you. Oh, I can't get down there, but there's some basically some payment icons along the bottom and you can add some links to them just in there. Okay, I think that's pretty much all of the kind of styling options that we need to worry about just uh, for now. So what I wanna do now is set up the homepage. So on to the next step. So let's get the homepage set up. Currently the site is just displaying our recent posts. And I wanna add a nice homepage with a slider at the top and then show off some products underneath. Maybe add a few other elements, we'll see how it goes. So the first thing we need to do is create a page that's gonna be the homepage. To do that we go to new and then page. The title we can add home or call it whatever you like really. And that's it, we just need to publish the page. And then that's done. So to set it as the actual homepage, so the page that displays when people come to your website, you need to go down to settings and then reading. And then here where it says homepage, we select the page we just created, mine's called home, and then save changes. So now when we visit the site, we see a blank page called home. We'll get rid of this word home in a minute. So the first thing I'm gonna do for the homepage is set up the slider. So that's the bit at the top uh, with the images uh, that's gonna be promoting my articles. Now I can make it so that it generates it automatically so I don't have to keep updating it. So whenever I add a blog post, it's automatically added to the slider. So to do that, we need to go into the dashboard. And then scroll right down and go into a slider revolution. Then I'm gonna click new slider. And scroll back to the top for the content source and it's gonna be a post-based slider. Here we can decide which posts we want it to feature. So I wanna go uh, by categories and tags and it's post. Then we can choose the category, I'm gonna choose um, both categories, so I just held down the shift key on my uh, keyboard there to choose both. And I just wanna have four posts in the slider. Section two is the title, let's just call it homepage. And the second box, which is the alias, let's call that homepage two. Number three is we can select the slider type, we'll just leave it as a standard slider. For slide layout, I'm gonna select full width. So I just wanna adjust the height, that's too high for uh, what I want. I'm thinking around 400 will be okay. We'll see what it looks like. And the rest, um, I think we can leave as it is, so let's click save settings. And that's our slider created. We now just need to um, sort out a template, so basically how the um, slides are gonna look. We do that in here. So I want the, uh, use the featured image off the post, like that, so just click featured image. I wanna set a link, so uh, I'm gonna click on link and SEO, and then I'm gonna go to enable link and select enable. The link is gonna be kind of dynamic, it's just gonna link through to the post that the slide's about, so I need to add a little uh, wildcard template thing. So it's two of these brackets, and then the word link, and then brackets again, like that. Then here is what our slide's gonna look like. This big W basically represents the featured image from the post. On top of that, I just want the um, post title. So I'm gonna click add layer, text, I'm gonna remove the words caption text one. Let me click on this little uh, filter, funnel thing, whatever it is. And this brings up a whole load of meta information that we can dynamically add to um, our slider. So I just want the title, so I'm just gonna click title. Click the little tick. I want it to be in the middle. So if I come over here, I can align center and then align middle. I wanna use the font that I'm using on the 
site, the font that I've got in the logo, that kind of thing. So I should be able to find, oh, I'm in the wrong section. It's under here under font family. Should be able to find the font I want, which is called Luckiest Guy, if you remember. There it is. And let's make that nice and big. I reckon around 40 pixels. Let's make the line height uh, 48. The color white is fine. We'll just see what it looks like. So I'm gonna click on this up here to save the little floppy disk thing. Obviously, no one knows what a floppy disk is nowadays anyway, that's a bit of a weird icon, but hey. So let's go and have a look at the site. It's not gonna appear just yet because we just need to adjust our home page. So back at the home page, I'm gonna click edit page. And scroll down where it says select slider, I'm gonna select my new home page slider. Where it says show title, I'm gonna turn that to no because I don't want it to have the word home on the page. Click update to save. And let's have a look. There we go. So that's just gonna scroll through the uh, the slides uh, one by one. We can adjust it and we can add some arrows, that kind of thing. Now I'm wondering if I should make it just slightly higher because it is chopping a few of the images off a little bit. And this is, is a bit too wide. So let's, uh, let's just adjust it. Let's go back into the dashboard. Back into slider evolution. Click on the cog. So down here is the height. I'm gonna put this up to 500. Might make it a little bit too tall, but we'll see. Let's add um, a bit of navigation. Come over here, go to navigation, enable arrows. I think that'll be fine. Let's click save. Then let's just edit that slide so that the text just isn't too wide. First thing I'm gonna do is just adjust this behavior setting. I'm gonna change it on the align uh, setting to slide based. That'll help us line everything up a bit better. Then I'm gonna go back to style. I'm gonna set a width because I don't want the text to be too wide. And I think something like 50% might be all right. Well, let's put 50% in anyway. Let's go for 60, hey, why not? Like that. Now, I want it to go onto two lines if there is more text than there is space. So I just need to click on this little T. Ooh, it's being a bit weird. I'm just click that so that the arrow is pointing down. That'll give me a line break like that. And then the final thing is I want it to center align the text. So to do that, that's in spaces. If you don't see this panel, you click on this little arrow here and you get some extra options. So you're in spaces for text align, I'm gonna go for center. Yeah, and that should be it. Let's click save, and visit the site. Okay, our navigation arrows are showing. And we're going on to two lines. And the height of the picture is better. I mean, it is quite big, but mm, it's fine, I like it. So now I'm gonna add some products to this uh, home page. To do that, we need to edit the page with WP Bakery. So to do that, we can just click on this link up here. Scroll down, and we can start adding some elements. So let's add an element under WooCommerce. I'm gonna go for recent products. Let's give that a click. I'm gonna leave these settings as they are. 12 per page is fine. And four columns is perfect. So I'm just gonna click save changes and then close. What I wanna do is I wanna add a title above the products. So I click on the plus. 
Now in Kingdom, we've got this Kingdom headline, so let's add that. And call this recent products. Save, close. Now it's probably added it down the bottom here, let's have a look. There it is. So I can just drag it up to the top past all these products. Don't worry, the products aren't gonna actually display like that. It's the preview's gone a bit weird. Just get to the top, come on, there we go. Pop it there. Let's click update up the top corner here. That's updated. Let's click close and have a look what we got. There's our slider. It's our headline. And here's our products and they're in a nice carousel so you can just kind of scroll through. So we're gonna add a couple more of these from different categories um, of products on the site. So let's go back in and edit again. Let's add and go into WooCommerce. Then we go for product category. Again, 12 and four. I'm gonna choose um, the bathing and grooming category to start with, why not? And save changes. Close that. Let's scroll down and see. I think that might be it. Yeah, there it is. So there's all our grooming uh, bits and bobs. Now just above it here, I'm gonna add another headline. So I'm gonna click on the little plus. Kingdom, Kingdom headline. Just type in the, uh, the name of the category. You may have noticed I've changed a couple of the category names just to fit the products uh, better. I think it was bathing and showering before, if you remember. So there we go, let's take a look at the site now. So we've got recent products, we've got bathing and grooming. So that's coming together quite nicely. I'll probably add a couple more of these. Um, what I wanna also add is the blog posts again towards the bottom. So let's edit again. Of course, there's loads of different elements that you can add with the WP Bakery page builder. It's really up to you how you want your homepage to look. So I'm gonna scroll right down to the bottom. I'm gonna click on this plus to add an element at the bottom of the page. What I wanna add is, if I can find it, a post grid. There we go. And it's gonna display our posts in a nice grid format. So I just wanna show uh, four items and I want there to be four elements per row. So that'll just give us one nice row of posts. And that's it, let's click Save Changes. And close. Then just above it, I'm gonna add uh, by clicking on this plus, another header, kingdom headline. I call it dog technology. Oh, technol. If I can spell dog technology articles, something like that. Close and then update. Let's close WP Bakery and have a look at what the site is now looking like. There we go. So we've got our recent products, we've got our bathing and grooming products. So I'll probably add a few extra um, categories to the homepage just to make it a bit longer. And here is our dog technology articles. Look at them looking good. We can just click straight through. So that's pretty much it for the homepage. Um, of course, you'll play around with it and make it your own, add whatever you like. Um, but for a kind of basic setup, I think this is fine. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add a few more of my categories, my product categories. 
just gonna show you a slightly different way of doing it. Um, when you're editing with the WP Bakery page builder, you've got two options, you can edit it from the front of the site, so you basically see um, what you'd see if you're looking at the site, sort of, it doesn't always work 100%, but it, it gives you an idea. Can be a bit clunky though when you're trying to drag and drop stuff around. So this is the front end editor and you can see like the products, they, they kind of don't display quite right. But you know, it gives you an idea of what you're looking at. To speed things up, to add those extra categories, I'm just gonna switch to the back end editor, so click this button up here. And then we can uh, do it within the kind of usual content section. And we can see that here's our things, here's our kingdom handler, our product category, and there's the blogs and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it doesn't give you a visual uh, representation of what's going on, but it's kind of clear and quicker to, to navigate. So if I wanted to really quickly just, you know, add some more categories, I can click this duplicate button and just add, how many have I got? I think I've got four or five, so that's probably enough. And then some more headlines, just go doink, 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 like that. Then I can just simply kind of drag them all down so they're all nicely arranged properly. There we go. So what's this one? Let's adjust this category. So I'm just gonna edit it now because obviously they're all gonna be showing the same category because I duplicated it. I'm gonna change this one to dog fitness. And let's change this headline to dog fitness too. Like that. That's good. And let's do this other category here. Let's change that to dog security. Change the headline. I'm just clicking on the pencil there to change stuff. Dog security. And then this last one, let's change this to um, dog walking. Probably add another one as well, I've got puppy training, but I think that's enough for now. It was dog walking, wasn't it? I think it was. Let's check. Should be paying attention more. Yeah, so that's all done. Let's just check this headline is good. Yeah, and this one. Ah, that's not quite right, that should say uh, whatever this category is. Um, bathing and grooming, of course. Let's just change that. There we go, and let's click update. And let's take a look at our homepage. Okay, there's our recent products, there's our bathing and grooming, the dog fitness, the dog security, the dog walking, and there's our articles. So it's looking really good now, the homepage, I'm really pleased with it. Uh, the next job is to add some static pages. So I'm gonna be adding uh, the about us, contact us, all those kind of things. And then we'll kind of uh, set up this footer area, add some links, add our Amazon disclaimer just to be clear that we are an affiliate site and, and, and all that good stuff. Well done, if you got this far, you're doing really well. Uh, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, there's not too much more to do. Anyway, keep going, let's move on to the next step. Okay, so let's add some static pages. I'm not gonna add too much content to these pages because that's really gonna be down to you. You're gonna need a privacy policy. You can find them online just to a search for privacy policy or free privacy policy. Or is it privacy? I don't know. You know what I mean. So yeah, go and find one of those and adjust it to suit your needs. It's a good idea to have one. And of course the About Us page is gonna be uh, all about you as well. So let's create those pages. I'm gonna to go to New and then Page. So the first one I'm gonna have is About Us. But then obviously you'd put whatever information you wanna put about yourself and your business and your affiliate site, that kind of thing. So something like we find the best dog technology products online, oh, on Amazon let's say, just for you. Of course you would add more than this, but uh, just for this demonstration that will do for now. Everything else you can leave exactly the same. Let's click Publish. The next page I'm gonna add is the privacy policy, so I'm just gonna click Add New again. Privacy policy. Let's click Publish. 
I'll find something later to, to add to that. And then I'm gonna add a contact us page as well where I'm just gonna have a form that sends an email over to me. Like that, and we'll come back and add the form in a moment. So to add that form, if we go over here to contact forms, there's one here called contact form one, let's just edit that. This is a uh, plugin that we're using, contact form seven, it's installed when you install uh, the theme. Let's just change this to contact us. So that's fine, it's got your name, your email, subject and message, I think that's, that's all fine. Uh, in the mail tab, it's got my email address and everything, so that's fine. Everything else is fine, so let's click save. And to add this form, all we need to do is just copy this short code. So I'm just gonna copy this little bit of text. Go back into pages, find that contact us page. Here it is, edit. And put something like send us a message. Then I'm just gonna paste in that short code. Click update. Let's have a quick look at the page. There's our lovely form. Perfect. So what I wanna do now is create a menu for the top, because I wanna add uh, links to those pages across the top. So let's go into menus, you can get in this way. Just Hover on your site name and then select menus. Then I'm gonna go create a new menu. I'm gonna call it top menu. And then create menu. Then in here I'm gonna add the about us, the privacy policy, the contact us, and the blog, why not? Let's add those. And uh, we can rearrange them as we like. So like that's fine. Then I'm gonna select top navigation and save. And let's take a look. Okay, so we've got our pages, we've got our top menu that's looking good. So the next step is to take a look at this footer area. So on to the next step. So to add some elements to our footer, we need to add some widgets. The first one I'm gonna add is my affiliate disclaimer, or disclosure, whatever you wanna call it. It's very important uh, that you make it very clear that you're an Amazon affiliate and that you're promoting Amazon products. Basically, otherwise Amazon will be cross with you and you might get in trouble. So let's do that now. So I'm gonna go into widgets, you can access it by hovering on the site title and then selecting widgets. And then over here we've got footer content, so we can just drag whatever we like into that area. So I'm gonna go for text, so here we go. Find the text widget, scroll back up again, drop that in. And then we can just paste in or write in some text, it's basically the same as when you're adding a post or a page. Now I've got a disclosure to hand, it's in my notes, so let me just find that. There it is, let's just copy this. Then I'm just gonna paste that in. I need to insert my name, Bow Wow Tech. And then I need to enter the correct Amazon site. Feel free to copy this off bowwowtech.co.uk for your own site, obviously just change the name. And this is the title. We're an Amazon affiliate, that'll do. So let's just have a look what that looks like. Make sure you click save, by the way, on that blue button. Let's scroll down and take a look. There it is. Okay, that's uh, a bit too long, it's being cut off, so we just need to adjust the, uh, the length of the title, I'll just change it to something else. So let's add a couple more uh, widgets and fill out this footer uh, a little bit more. 
The next thing I'm gonna add is um, the links that we just added to the top. And then I'm gonna add some links to um, some categories and maybe some links to some products, something like that. So we'll go back into widgets. So let's first adjust um, that. I'm just gonna call it Amazon Affiliate, that'll be fine. Then I'm gonna add a menu, the menu that we've just created for the top bar. I'm gonna add that as well. So I'm just gonna select navigation menu, drop that in. We'll just call it more info. And select that top menu. Then next I'm gonna add some WooCommerce categories or WooCommerce products. Let's see what we've got. So we've got, uh, here we go. Oh, I could add recent posts actually, that'd be a good thing. Let's add some products first. Um, I think we'll go um, for product categories. You can of course add whatever widgets you like. So product categories, that's fine. I don't wanna show hierarchy. We'll see what that looks like. There's too many categories, obviously that will look messy and you, you probably won't wanna use that, but we'll see what it looks like. And then yeah, finally I'm gonna add recent posts. Call it like latest from the blog, oh no, uh, articles. I'm just <laughs> keeping in mind that you can't have a, a too long a title, otherwise it gets chopped. Okay, so let's take a look at the site now. Okay, so let's scroll down, take a look. Okay, here's our footer. Okay, it doesn't look too bad. Well, notice there's an uncategorized um, category showing there, which I don't want, so I'll adjust the widget in a second. Also, this doesn't look great, so what I think I'll do is I'm just gonna do a quick edit now in the video. I'm gonna do a little bit of CSS uh, tweaks, some custom CSS, and then I will uh, we'll come back into the video and I'll show you the CSS that I've created, and you know you just need to paste it into the customize. You can find all the code over at wpeagle.com, but I think we can make this look a bit better. So very quickly before I do that, I'm just gonna get rid of this uncategorized, which is very easy. We just go back into widgets. And then on the product categories widget, tick box to hide empty categories, just like that. So yeah, let me just do a little bit of CSS adjustment, get this footer looking better. For some reason the theme uh, doesn't have a good looking footer. I don't know why, so we can we can soup it up. That's gonna be better, but I think I yeah, need to take out some space, maybe increase this font size maybe reduce this font size or, or something just to make it look better. So let's do an edit and I'll see you in a sec. Okay, so I've tidied up the footer on the site using some custom CSS. As you can see, I've made the fonts all the same size, tidied up these uh, articles so that it kind of cuts them off if they're too long. I thought that looked a bit neater. And I've added a little bit of gray just to uh, you know, bring it out a little bit, <laughs> make it so that it's clear that it's the footer. So how I've done that is I've added some code to the custom CSS section within Customize. You can find this code just like before over at wpeagle.com. Find the relevant post on there around this tutorial and you'll find it there. It's basically this stuff here. And of course you can adjust this if you need to. So there's the font size for the menus. Um, some of the other stuff you don't need to adjust. This bit does the uh, cutting off of the titles for the blog post. This bit here does the background um, color and that, so you could change the color by changing that code just there. So the footer's looking good, looking like it's all done. And of course you can add whatever widgets um, you'd like um, to the footer. But basically the site is pretty much there now. Um, You'd obviously wanna add your content to your, your pages and say add any widgets that you like to the footer. So what I'm gonna finish this tutorial off with is um, I'm gonna connect Google Analytics so that we can see how many visitors the site gets and, and all that kind of good information. And I'm also gonna install an SEO plugin and I'm gonna submit the site over to Google so um, so that yeah, hopefully it gets indexed and, and starts coming up on Google. I'm not gonna go into the SEO in too much detail because I've got other videos on the channel that do go into a lot more detail around SEO. We're just gonna install the plugin and I'll give you a quick overview and I'll show you how to submit to Google. So let's get on to the final two steps and yeah, and then you're nearly there. 
Okay, so I'm over at Google Analytics. It's a great way of tracking the traffic and the visitors that come to your website. It's totally free to set up. So head over to analytics.google.com if you haven't already got an account. You'll need to sign in with your Google account and then you can go about creating a new property which is the screen that I'm on right now. I've already got an analytics account. I've had it for ages and I've got loads of websites attached to it. So that's why I'm starting here. I don't wanna give away any of my clients data accidentally in the video. Let's start setting up the new property. So you need to enter your website name, like that, and you need to enter the URL like that. It's on HTTP at the moment. I've got a video on the channel around setting up a HTTPS site, so do check that out if you do wanna be all secure, which could, could benefit your um, SEO rankings. But for now, we'll just stick with HTTP. Select an industry category, um, which I guess you were like shopping or something. <laughs> Doesn't really matter. And then set your time zone. If we click Get Tracking ID, we're all done. And it's basically saying that we need to add this bit of code to our website. But of course, we've got a plugin that's already installed on the site that makes it really easy. So let's go back to the site, go back to the dashboard. You remember we got that annoying message that won't go away across the top of our dashboard. So we'll we'll give it a click now and get it all set up. This uh, this thing here. So then we just need to click on this big button to authenticate with Google. Select your Google account. Allow uh, this stuff to uh, whatever. Mm, doesn't look too scary. So let's go with that. Then need to pick your profile. If you've only got the one, it will just be the, the first one that comes up. As I say, I've got loads of analytics accounts, so um, I'm gonna just type in like that. Then complete authentication. Then that's all done. So it says that we're using UA4092428, which is the same as that tracking ID there, so that's all good. And then you don't really need to adjust any more um, options in here. You can just, uh, you can if you like, go into tracking. So you can set whether to ignore um, certain user roles, which is kind of handy, because you don't want to kind of track yourself, otherwise you're gonna skew all the data. So if you're logged in as an admin or an editor, you won't be tracked. Uh, it's got events tracking and, and you know, you can go through this if you like and adjust the settings, but generally as it comes, it'll be fine and it'll, it'll track all your visitors and everything like that. So that's Google Analytics all set up. Let's get on to the next step. Okay, so now we're gonna install Yoast SEO and then we're gonna submit a sitemap to Google Webmaster Console so that Google knows all about our website and we get some feedback in terms of how well uh, we're being indexed by Google and how well we're ranking and, and loads of other cool information. Before I do that, I'm just gonna get rid of this annoying um, message. You can do that by clicking dismiss. In fact, you could probably turn shipping off if you want because we're not using any shipping because we're using WooZone, which of course is gonna redirect all our traffic to Amazon. So to disable that shipping, you can just come into WooCommerce and then go to settings, and then go to shipping. Then in the general settings, if we just scroll down and go to uh, the uh, shipping locations, we can just go disable shipping and shipping calculations. Save changes, that'll get rid of that um, that annoying message. I hate annoying messages, can you tell? But anyway, so back to the task in hand, let's set up our Yoast SEO plugin. It's very easy to do. We just need to go to plugins and then add new. Then up here in the keyword box, type in Yoast, like that, Yoast SEO. Then click Install Now. Once installed, click Activate. And there we go. And now we've got a brand new set of options down here called SEO. So let's go and take a look in there. I'm gonna click on the General uh, section. So here are our Yoast SEO settings. It lets us know if we've got any problems. It says that um, we still have the default WordPress tagline, so we should probably fix that. Uh, let's give that a click and fix it. 
and then we'll get our XML sitemap all configured. So if we're going to site identity, it's this tagline here. Just change it to something catchy like that. Oh, and the other thing that we should probably do uh, while we're in here is set a favicon or a site icon as they now call it. So at the moment we've got this little host gator icon, which is not what we want. I think we need a little dog. So what I need to do is create an image that's 512 by 512 pixels. I think I'll just have that little dog. So um, give me two seconds and I'll do that in Photoshop. Okay, and just like that, I have created one in Photoshop, so let's find it on my computer. Uh, upload files. And here, there it is. There's the dog. So select. Uh, do I wanna do some cropping? I guess so, I thought it was the right size. That's how it's gonna look in the browser tab, doesn't that look lovely? That's how it's gonna look on a phone if someone saves it as an app. It's just crop like that. Perfect, and then we can see up there we've now got the lovely little doggy. Okay, so let's click publish. That's that all fixed, let's get back into the SEO settings. Right, so no problems, perfect. Let's just go in the features and check that everything is switched on, which it is. You're gonna want all this stuff, probably, so leave it as it is. Uh, we don't need to go into Webmaster Tools right now. Let's go into Search Appearance. What we wanna do is adjust the types of content that are gonna appear in Google, because we don't want everything to appear in Google. So let's go into Content Types. So, show posts in search results, yes. Uh, data, date in snippet preview, we'll leave that hidden. We can leave this title template as it is, that's generally fine. It'll basically take the title of the post and the site name and add a separator, which is all fine. You can manually adjust the titles and I'll show you how to do that in a second. The page title is one of the most important things when it comes to SEO. The words in the page title are what Google uses to work out what the page is about. We'll want the Yoast SEO meta box. So pages, yes, that's fine, leave that. Products, yes. Um, now we're into the archives, product archives, yep, that's fine. I'm just gonna save changes on that. Let's go into media. We'll leave that as it is. Tax anonymies, yeah, we want the categories. I don't want tags. I don't want format. Product categories, yes, that'd be good. Product tags, no. Product shipping classes, no. Product brand, no. Style, no. Size, no. Binding, no. These are all kind of um, attributes and stuff that's come in with the Amazon products. And yeah, we don't need all this in Google, it's just too much. So I'm just gonna turn off all of these, no. No, nope, nope. I think there's quite a few. Let me just speed up time, but basically I'm just gonna turn all these off. Okay, right at the bottom, I'm gonna leave category URLs as keep and click Save Changes. Okay, let's check archives, all for archives, disabled, date archives, mm, disabled. That's fine. And I think that's basically all the settings that we need to adjust within Yoast. Okay, so now if we go back into general, and then features, then scroll down, where we've got XML sitemaps, we click on the little question mark, and click on this link here to see our XML sitemap, which is just basically a list of everything we've got on the site. So we've got different sitemaps for the different types of content, the posts, the page, the products, categories, product categories. And then if you uh, have a look in here, there's all my content. So now we need to submit this to our Google Webmaster Console. So let me just open a new tab. I'm just gonna do a search for Google Webmaster Console. If I can type. 
There we go, it's google.com slash webmasters. You need to sign in with your Google account. Now I've already got loads of sites already in here. I'm gonna add a new one by clicking add a property. And then put the address in. And click add. We now need to kind of authenticate and authorize ourselves with the site so that we can, uh, so Google knows that we own the site and it's our site. There's an easy way to do this because we've already got Google Analytics set up. So if you haven't set up your Google Analytics, you need to do that first um, because we can use it to verify ourselves. So if we go to alternate methods, select Google Analytics, click verify. Then we're all done. Let's click continue. So in here we'll get some data, it'll take a little while for it to come in. It'll tell us if we've got any cruel errors and some search analytic data so we can see how well we're ranking. But to submit our sitemap, all we need to do is go into crawl and then go to sitemaps. Then go to add test sitemap and we need to type the address in or copy and paste it. And it's this one here, it's generally sitemap underscore index.xml. Like that, click submit. Refresh the page. And that's gonna take a few moments to be indexed by Google, for Google to read it all and know exactly what pages and posts we've got on our site. So that's basically it in terms of submitting the sitemap. So one last thing, let me just show you how Yoast SEO works. There are plenty of videos on the channel all around Yoast SEO, so do check them out if you want a bit more detail on how to optimize stuff. Let me just close all these things down. So now if we go to a post or a product or even a page, we've got some new options. So let's take a look at this one. So now when we're editing a post or a product or a page, if we scroll down, right down, past the content, oh, there we go. We've got this Yoast SEO box and it gives us loads of information about how well we've optimized this page or post um, for the search engines. So the first tab you've got some readability tips. So um, it says, you know, you maybe need some more subheadings, some stuff about transition words, and the rest is all okay. So if you like, you can try and get this green by fixing these problems. The next tab, allows you to optimize around a particular focus keyword. So for example, on this one, we might wanna go for night time dog walking. And once you've entered that keyword, you get a score and mine's gone green, which is good. And that'll tell you how well the article is optimized around this keyword. So there are a few issues. The focus keyword doesn't appear in the first paragraph of copy. So you could then come back up and fix that problem by just add an extra line like, here's our guide on everything you need to know about, and then I'm just gonna paste, nighttime dog walking. Got the keyword in the first paragraph. Let's scroll down, see if we've fixed that. So the keyword density is a bit low, we should probably add it a few more times. And meta description, no meta description, sorry, has been specified, which is this bit here, which um, appears on Google. So it's sometimes worth adjusting it just to make it a bit catchier. Find out everything you need to know about, including top tips and the best products to keep you safe, you, and let's go dog as well, you and your dog safe while walking at night. Oh, I've gone a little bit long, but mm, I'm not worried, that's fine. So there's a few other kind of improvements. Now don't get too obsessed with this. Uh, you can spend hours trying to get everything 100% perfect. If you're green, then you're generally good. Um, 
And you can do exactly the same with products as well. You can go in and edit products, set a keyword, and try and optimize them if you like. Generally, Yoast will optimize them anyway because we've set a template when it comes to page uh, titles and things like that. So you don't need to go through every single product and try and optimize it. But if you've got a few products that you do uh, you know, want to promote and want to rank well, then it might be worth just having a look at them and seeing if they need any tweaks or maybe they need a bit more copy, that kind of thing. Anyway, let's wrap this up. Let's take a look at the site for one last time. Here's our site. I think it looks really nice. I'm really pleased with it. I will of course be kind of working on it and adding extra features and extra optimization and, and loads of other things and of course extra content. Over the coming weeks and months, I will of course be making videos around whatever I do on the site, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and you won't miss out on anything that I do on the site. And you know, I'll be doing videos around more SEO and and everything to do with this site and, and trying to get it to earn a bit of money and get some traffic. If you made it this far, well done. I hope your site is looking good and it's all working. Of course, if it's not, if you've got any questions, then please do leave them below this video and I'll do my best to try and reply to as many as I possibly can. But that's it from me. Let's end with my face. Well done. You made it to the end of the video. You should be very proud because not many people actually achieve that. I hope that you've got your website up and running and you're happy with it. I'd love to see what you've created. Why not share your site in the comments below? Of course, if you want, you might wanna keep your, your site secret in case you're worried that someone's gonna copy your niche. You can always email me at eagle at wpeagle.com and I'll take a look at your site as well and, and let you know my thoughts. Now, as I said at the beginning of this video, I'm gonna be creating loads more content around the site that I created in today's video. Things like promotion and adding extra features. And uh, you're not gonna wanna miss those if you've got your site up and running. So be sure to subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the eagle there. You're probably exhausted and you probably need to lie down. But if you are in the mood for more videos, then here is a video chosen especially for you. And you might even wanna check out my other channel. You can do that by clicking on my face. Remember, live streams every Wednesday. I hope to see you there. Until next time, bye for now.